That is the only snow you're going to see tonight. Welcome to the SoFi Hawaii Bowl from Paradise on Oahu. Two teams that have a long photo album of memories, of history, of whack days back in the past. Coaches who know each other very well and recruit the same ground, BYU and Hawaii today from Aloha Stadium. Thank you for joining us. Happy Christmas Eve to you. If you're celebrating Jason Benetti, Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick downstairs. When Nick Rolovich was hired as the head coach at Hawaii, he mentioned his game against BYU in 2001 as one of his fondest memories. This means a lot today. It, it is, and this is a rivalry I, I think we knew a little bit about, but until you get here and you talk to people, you don't really understand. I mean, the influence of BYU and the islands has been huge. I had people come to me and say, my two favorite teams. What am I going to do? I'm stressed out about this. There's been tension all week here. And, and there are other people who say, I only like one of them, and the other <laughs> one go away. Uh, BYU, interesting season for the Cougars. Let's catch you up if you haven't seen them this year. Two wins against Pac-12 teams for Hawaii. BYU got a win against USC and Tennessee. Tyson Williams injured, Zach Wilson injured. That's a problem. Jared Hall then takes over the starting reins, the first African-American quarterback to start at BYU, and then Baylor Romney comes in. They had so many different quarterbacks this year. Romney comes in, gets the win against Boise State. Wilson is back from injury, and that's good news for BYU. But listen, make no mistake about it. A lot of BYU people look at Zach Wilson and say he's the next great one, you know, the Steve Young kind of guy. That's that's the kind of physical attributes he has, tall, big arm, but he's had injuries this year, a shoulder, a thumb, and so he's trying to get back to the level where he was. But when he played healthy, he was fantastic in that bowl game last year, nearly perfect. They look for that tonight. That was in Boise. Better weather here today. Uh, you talk about the BYU quarterback lineage. With Hawaii, there are some big names as well who have come through and done that here. This is a big offense. Yeah, it, it's a huge offense. But when you think about playing here, this is an emotional place for the Hawaii team. They do a good job of, you know, as the late, great Dick Tomey, who coached here, used to tell me, be hospitable, show them the sights, get them to the beach, and then bring them into the stadium and unleash the emotional fury on them. You don't see the emotional fury in this. It looks so fun and nice, but they can really hurt you offensively this year. Hawaii with two wins against Pac-12 opponents. Arizona took a header here, then Oregon State. Historic wins against Nevada and New Mexico, huge mammoth offense in those games. They win five of their final six, go to their first ever Mountain West Championship game. They lose in the Mountain West Championship game, as so many have in Boise, Idaho. But there's a lot to play for here today for Hawaii in terms of this offense. Their quarterback, Cole McDonald. Well, yeah, and you're talking about a, a run-and-shoot offense. That, that identity is associated with Hawaii. And Cole McDonald conjures up the great quarterbacks who played in that kind of an offense. Timmy Chang here, Colt Brennan, and this is a guy who has a chance to do something those guys did. I mean, 3,000 yards passing multiple times. Only football game in town. Spend the next three and a half hours being terribly jealous of our weather. BYU and Hawaii will kick it off when we come back. A beautiful Christmas Eve here in Hawaii, and the guy who gets to enjoy it all from field level all day long is Quint Kesnick. Hi, Quint. Hi, aloha, Jason and Rod. It's 84 and sunny down here. Feels like 95 in the sun on the far side where BYU bakes, and this Hawaii Rainbows team with their run and shoot, man, they toss the ball around. They've got three receivers with 80 or more receptions. Cedric Bird is their leading target. He's got 95 catches, 10 touchdowns, and he's good for about 80 yards per game. He's been battling back spasms during bowl prep, and they're not sure if he's going to make it through this game. Uh, if he doesn't play, that's a significant hit to the run-and-shoot offense. They'll also be playing without cornerback Rogesterman Farris, their best corner out for academics. That's big news, above-the-fold news for Hawaii's defense, which has struggled. Obviously, the offense is ahead of the defense on this team. I, I just know this is a fun offense to watch. Off we go from the SoFi Hawaii Bowl. And Lincoln Victor on the return 
to the 28-yard line. Cole McDonald, junior quarterback, has adopted Hawaii as a home after growing up in La Mirada, California. Here's a young man who hasn't had the starting job in every moment this year, but he has put up huge numbers wearing those dreadlocks in honor of former Hawaii quarterback Brian Moniz. Yeah, it, it's an interesting look. You know, you're talking about somebody who showed up in Hawaii with a crew cut, and now he's got the blonde dreads. Shows the growth and change that can happen in college, right? Yeah, the curiosity, that Magellan sort of feel that Nick Rolovich has talked about, the Magellan instinct of folks who come here as McDonald will throw on first down, and it's Miles Reed out of the backfield cutting to the 32-yard line. The sophomore out of Corona, California, who they describe as having contact courage, Reed. But look, Cole McDonald, even though he's not been the quarterback for every snap, has put up mammoth numbers. Yeah, and I think he's a guy, at least in my view, who's kind of seeking redemption. Didn't have a great bowl game last year and has had a terrific season and, and looking to, to make up from last year's bowl game with a big performance tonight. That is a story we'll follow throughout the game, whether or not Shevin Cordero, his backup, gets to see time in this game as Reed has a carry to the 35, and it's third down and short. And McDonald is... He's a big quarterback. He's a, a tall guy, you know, six foot four, 220 plus pounds, a big arm, likes to get the ball down the field. Much better throwing the ball in the middle of the field than on the perimeter outside the hashes. And to get him off to a good start, you try to make sure you get him a good throw inside the hashes down the field. A lot of what you just described also fits for Nick Rolovich, who played quarterback here at Hawaii, as that is incomplete to the outside, and it'll set up fourth down as Jared Smart was the target, but BYU gets to bring it out. Yeah, well, the run and shoot, you know, the receiver and the quarterback are reading the defensive coverage at the same time, and if they aren't on the same page, you get a throw like that. You don't expect this Hawaii offense will scuffle all game long at 32nd in scoring offense in the FBS, but Kalani Sitake's pass defense has been top 35 as well as Stan Gaudian punts it. And a fair catch for Aleva Hifo. So for BYU, Zach Wilson, the starting quarterback, and we give you our keys to the game brought to you by Dollar General. Happy holidays from Hawaii and well, when you think about Hawaii, we talked about their big passing attack. It is fantastic, but they lead the nation in turnovers. Got to take care of the ball. BYU is at their best when they run to the edge and they throw the ball well. And throwing it well means Zach Wilson needs to have a big game, and he is fully capable of that. As I mentioned before, he had a great bowl game last year. Absolutely. I mean, you talk about 18 for 18 against Western Michigan to start in Boise State. Derek Thomas didn't stop to set up second down. But Zach Wilson, sophomore out of Draper, Utah, he grew up a huge Utah Utes fan. I mean, they had seats at the 50-yard line his family did in Salt Lake City, and now he's wearing royal blue. You talk about the connection. His dad was born in Hawaii. He was offered a scholarship to Hawaii. There, there's a connection all the way around there. Yeah, so dad, I'm sure, isn't terribly conflicted, though he's got a heart for the islands as third down is coming up as Wilson misfires. Well, didn't, uh, didn't Wilson tell us that he hated BYU when he was in college? His dad played at Utah, and he you know, lived, what, 40 miles away from BYU, and that was the enemy, and now here he is, the star quarterback, the next guy for BYU. It almost shocks you when you're sitting across the table from the BYU quarterback, and he says, yeah, I grew up, I grew up loving Utah, because that's just not allowed in, in the wars they've had whether in conference or out of conference, whatever it might be. They go empty with five wide. Free runner, and Wilson throws it incomplete. He wanted the tight end, very talented Matt Bushman, the junior, with a pressure coming from Thomas, who had a very nice series. Well, Hawaii wants to pressure, you know, emotional, get yourself going. When you get an empty formation, only five blockers. And so the ball's got to come out fast. Hawaii wants to take advantage of that and put the pressure on Wilson affect him. Remember, Wilson hasn't played an awful lot because of the injuries this year, the shoulder, the thumb, and getting into that perfect timing, you know, might take some time. So you want to get after him a little bit if you're Hawaii. 
Jake Oldroy to punt for BYU. They've had kicker roulette recently as JoJo Ward lets it bounce and roll. The ball's chasing him. And it's inside the 20 yard line. So first down Hawaii. When we come back after a 56 come yard punt, field, take in the sunshine. Enjoy it with us, folks. Thirty-second meeting, BYU and Hawaii and our impact players brought to you by Lexus Run. Yeah, Cedric Bird, we talked about him getting healthy enough, hopefully, to go and be good enough today. And then the linebacker, Matau Tia, is outstanding for Hawaii. Katoa is the running back that we'll see a lot of. And Tonga, the man in the middle for the BYU defense, better take care of him because he can disrupt everything. That's big number 95 with his hand down in the middle of that formation. A possible NFL prospect certainly as McDonald is on target to the 34 to Jason Schmarsh. Jason Matthew Schmarsh with the catch on a gain of 16. Well, we talked about confidence with the quarterback and getting him a throw between the hashes. The run and shoot, the biggest play you have to defend in that run and shoot is that seam route or that post route over the middle. Jason Matthew Scharsch with catch number 81. He is 177 yards shy of 1,000 as they go for maybe possibly four guys with 1,000 yards this season as McDonald throws an absolute bullet to the 43-yard line. That's Cedric Bird who is playing to start the game. Yeah, and good rhythm. Now the run and shoot four receivers, right? Two slot guys and two guys on the outside, usually a two-by-two formation sometimes a three by one formation and again to me anyway the most dangerous aspect of it are those slot guys who get up the middle of the field in the scene there's bird in motion and he'll get the carry knocked back he does have the first down so Hawaii runs this run and shoot you hear about the air raid the run and shoot uh, what's the difference to you well, you know, they are similar in the sense that they both try to get space, find open grass, and they try to get the ball out. The, the air raid is a little bit more horizontal, throw the ball wide. The, the run and shoot is a little bit more attack you down the field first, a little bit more vertical. Uh, not, not as many of the underneath routes, but they're both a philosophy and an, an aggressive attack of throwing the ball first. I go five wide here. McDonald down the middle, another seam ball for a first down to the 40-yard line to JoJo Ward. Yeah, yeah, you know, again, we talked about this. You can't handle the run and shoot if you don't keep the ball out of the middle of the field. You have to wall off slot guys from getting inside. Sometimes you'd have to get your hands on those guys early, but if they can throw the ball in the middle of the field, Hawaii, BYU's in for a long day. Gain of 16 on that catch for Ward and this Hawaii offense, which put up massive numbers at points this year, just 10 of the Mountain West Championship game. They will run it on first down and a tough place to run against BYU in the middle of that defense. In, you know, BYU has faced good passing attacks this year and they've done well. They handled, you know, USC and, you know, their bounce hit passing attack multiple receivers they handed Jordan handle jump Jordan Love at Utah State they like to play a lot of drop eight coverage rush three and so that tends to make it tougher on the short throws but if you don't get your hands on guys you'll have guys running free down the middle of the field it's part of the reason these guys BYU leads the nation in tipped passes a lot of that coming from the linebacker spot as McDonald turns it to the outside and has yet another completion once again for Cedric Burrs, the leading receiver on this team. But but look, if you're if you're a Hawaii, you you are running this offense for a reason, and Nick Rolovich is a large part of that. He ran it himself. Well, he ran it under June Jones, and you know it gave the the island of this university an identity. You know, it, we're we're running, shoot, we're exciting. We throw throw the ball around. We're aggressive. It doesn't require six foot four wide receivers. True that. Absolutely, and even Rolovich said they don't have a guy like Ashley Lely who was outstanding when he played. This is on target for another first down. Smart keeps his feet, 
and travels all the way to the six yard line. Jared Smart has a first in goal. Hawaii on a gain of 25. And how about McDonald spreading it around? We've seen Sharsh, Bird, Ward, Smart. Time out on the field for a BYU all of these injury. Key receivers do the work, and they've been doing it in the middle of the field. And we'll see BYU at some point get to the sideline and talk about adjustments to try to keep those guys out of the middle of the field. And Rod, they need to get to McDonald because he is sitting in a pristine pocket, great height, vision, lanes, and he's just driving that ball uh, with, without any kind of BYU defensive interference. But Rod, can you get to him with the well, quick trigger? That, that's the point. The ball comes out quickly, and keep in mind, BYU is really not a high-pressure team. Only 12 sacks on the season. They don't really have a dominant pass rusher. Yeah, they like to play coverage. Really on the field on the previous play was that the runner's knee was not down and he advanced for additional yardage. That ruling is under further review. They're going to review that and take a look at Jared Smart who just went over a thousand yards for Hawaii. So he joined Cedric Bird very soon. Jojo Ward will go over a thousand as well. They'll become the sixth team with three 1,000 yard receivers in FBS history. Take a look again and see if Smart's knee was down real time. I didn't think he was down. You? Well, I thought he got his hand down instead. Yep, there's the hand. No, there's the knee at about the five yard line. Yeah, the left knee actually comes down at about, that's the 10 yard line actually. One thing that's notable about this run and shoot offense is the receivers meet with the quarterbacks. It's not, you don't have quarterback meetings and wide receiver meetings, they meet together. Because so many times they need to be on the same page, as you said, Rod, with the with the option routes that you're seeing. Okay, yeah. if the coverage is is this, then I run a curl. If the coverage is something else, then then I then I run a fade. And so quarterback and receiver need to see the same thing. Hey, bowl season rolls on Saturday. It's the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, number 17, Memphis. Trying to end that incredible After season with a win, even though Mike Norvell will be leaving. Line. They'll take on number 10, Penn State. It's noon Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Uh, we saw both of those teams. Yeah. What's your feeling on that game initially? I, I thought they were both fun to watch you. this season. And uh, Penn State is suiting up a lot of players. A lot of guys have decided to play. I think they're only going to be missing one guy who's leaving for the NFL, which is one of the stories this postseason number of guys who are skipping bowl games but many more playing than we we expected we thought the numbers would be higher it was two guys started uh, skipping goals bowl games back in 2015 approximately 25 skipping now number it's, number could have been a lot higher and some guys doing the opposite like yep. a brown for Auburn coming out and trying to essentially recruit his guys to play in that bowl game as Reed gets tripped up that was Trajan Peely who got him by the ankles and that sets up second down and goal. One of the knocks on the run and shoot is that once you get inside the 20 in the red zone, you don't really have that dominant rushing attack. You don't have the option of being balanced down there. Expect now Hawaii to be more aggressive down here, go back to the air, and to maybe give you the, the rub, the pick plays, because BYU will settle into an underneath zone down here. Three-man front for BYU, three-man rush. McDonald near side, he's got a completion inside the 10 to Lincoln Victor, the talented freshman from the state of Washington, a quarterback in high school, and it sets up and an excellent, down goal. excellent tackle by BYU. That's one of the critical co components of defending the run and shoot is making the tackles in space, finishing off the one-on-ones. Yeah, Q, good point. And they can do that down here when they play zone. They want to stay out of the man coverage because they don't want guys to get rubbed off by the pick routes down here. QB draw is an option. McDonald's is their second leading rusher. Yep, good call, Q. They have spread the field with five wide on third and goal. McDonald, end zone, touchdown. Jared Smart with the opening score. When you play the picket fence zone coverage down here, everybody guards the goal line and everybody forgets about the back line. 
So every offense has their play where they want their receivers to get to the back line where the defenders won't go and drop the ball in over them. Done perfectly by Cole McDonald. Jared Smart scores the touchdown. It's not as big of a score as what his dad did back in 1987 against Syracuse, but it counts for a lot. It's a postseason touchdown, 7-0 Hawaii. The SoFi Hawaii Bowl, brought to you by SoFi. Save, spend, earn, borrow, and invest all in one app. The Hawaiian Islands. GoHawaii.com and Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. One of the great parts of bowl season is the opportunity for all the players involved, wherever they go, to get an opportunity to experience the community. A lot of guys don't have the opportunity to travel a whole lot when they're younger, going into their football days, and BYU made a visit to a local hospital. Uh, spent some time with some families who could use a little smile across their face uh, this holiday season, which is very nice. It is fantastic. So, smart with a touchdown, 7 nothing Hawaii, and BYU will get it back at the 25-yard line off the fair catch. Let's go back to that touchdown. Receiver number smart. five, Paul Ford, yeah, 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 fair catch. It's a common defense teams play on the goal line. Defend the goal line. Do not let a, a hard throw cross the goal line so they do that but they don't defend the back of the end zone where there are bubbles and so if the receiver gets past the pickets fence there the quarterback just has to loft the ball to the back of the end zone nobody hits the receiver nobody gets a hand on him he just runs to the open bubble and waits for the quarterback to drop it in there so you're basically doing what you're expected to do yeah. you get beat yeah it's it's easy Lopini Katoa to the outside on a short gain on first down. BYU did that quite a bit in last year's game, running to the perimeter. Yeah, they had 49 points and 280 yards rushing against Hawaii last season, and they did it primarily jet sweep, run to the edge, and finding big old number 89 Bushman, their tight end, letting him get a block on the edge and running behind him. Bushman, the junior, there are senior receivers all over the place. And talking to Jeff Grimes, the offensive coordinator, his hope is that he can have them all have a very successful final game as Wilson gets dropped at the 31. Katoa sets up a third down. Yeah, and if you're Hawaii, the number one thing on your list coming in is to stop the outside run. And they've got a third down now. They've done that. Expect them to be aggressive here. They like their corner play. They played good man coverage. But remember, as Quinn told you, Ferris is out. So if I'm BYU, I'm looking up for number 20, Wilson, and trying to work on him and see if he can hold up in man-to-man -man coverage. Wilson at the bottom of your screen. As Zach Wilson throws this way, and he's got the first down to Aleva Hefo at the 40-yard line. That was against Wilson, number 20. Yeah, well, you know, the BYU coaches have eyes, too. Yeah, that's right. You know, they look out there, and they don't see Ferris and say, who's the guy in for him? And they see that it's Wilson. They go, oh, he hasn't played that much. Go after him. Zach it's a lot of room. Q. Yeah, Zach Wilson, the QB, Rod. He's got some zip on the ball. I mean, he's got a nice release. You talked about that thumb injury. He injured it. He broke it against Toledo. And so grip has been an issue for him. But his release is beautiful. Arm strength has been an issue as well with the shoulder injury that he had. And he picked off right there. He threw it into traffic and got beat. Corey Bethley picks it off. I think he had two receivers in the same area. And it was a little unclear to me which one he was trying to get the ball to. There's one, uh, It's a little bit behind. His initial uh, read Hefo there, and that was the problem. There was another receiver in the area, but Hefo has his ball behind him, and Hefo will tell you that's one he should catch all day long. Not the best throw, but eye level with the hands on it. Hefo's got to come down with that. Usually a very reliable yep. senior, Aleva Hefo. Hawaii with a short field, and Reed. Driven back by Chaz Ayu, the sophomore linebacker. A little post play stuff going on. Chaz Ayu very excited. 
one thing that's a little different about this run and shoot, Rod, the quarterback uh, in terms of being a run threat, their second leading rusher, and then the RPO game that they run is, is a little different for a run and shoot team, true? Yeah, I'd say June Jones would look out here and say, you know, Mouse Davis, they'd go, that's not our run and shoot. We, we didn't do the run pass option game, and we certainly didn't have quarterback design runs. So maybe 80, 85% run and shoot. Well, Mike Leach says that about the air raid, too, and use the running back too much. McDonald to throw it down the middle. Smart again on his fingertips. Cut down. An absolute dagger from McDonald for 40 yards. Oh, my goodness. Woo! You talk about a quarterback who's been focused on redeeming himself from his performance in last year's bowl game. He could not have gotten off to a better start, and that was one heck of a throw. That is a jaw-dropping throw. What is the one thing we said BYU could not allow to happen with this passing attack? Between the hash Between marks. Between the hash marks. What have they done? Between the hash marks. And look at the score. Yeah. Extra point for Meskel. And Hawaii has jumped out to an early big lead. If you grew up watching Timmy Chang and Colt Brennan and all the guys they ran through here and chucking the football, there's another one at Aloha Stadium. Paul McDonald, an absolute bullseye for the touchdown. Fourteen points in 237, the soothing sounds of Hawaii offense at 455 first quarter. Quinn Kesnick is downstairs, Rod Gilmore, Jason Benetti. We are enjoying the weather so you don't have to here at Aloha Stadium. Very kind of us. Uh, very, I mean, we are as philanthropic of a crew as anybody as BYU will get it in an important drive coming up as Gowalaku on the return as it just short of the 30 as we take a look at the clutch delivery brought to you by Chipotle. Yeah, smart football here by Hawaii. You get uh, a, a three deep coverage. You see the safety will vacate toward the center, but look at 49 Wilgar. He's being asked to cover the seam and run with 23 uh, smart. That's a mismatch. If you can't get your hands on smart and slow him down, that's an absolute mismatch in a track meet. Great for Hawaii to recognize that you've got a 235-pound linebacker trying to run the seam with a swift receiver. Can't do it. And they're going to keep needling that, too. If that keeps yeah. happening, oh, yeah. they'll keep going. Oh, yeah. Zach Wilson to throw to Bushman, the junior tight end. Very talented. You think very highly of him. NFL scouts do as well. I, I don't know what he does better catching it or blocking on the edge. I mean, he's equally adept at both of those. He's a guy who said that he'll decide on his NFL future after this game. We've had a lot of guys over the years say that, and it usually means they're leaving, but who knows? Never know. Uh, he does have a great mentor and his father-in-law, Chad Lewis, an outstanding tight end. You may remember him from the Philadelphia Eagles, among others. That one fell just short, incomplete from Wilson. And Alevi Hifo could not reel it in third down. Yeah, he had a play out there. I mean, if if Wilson is completely himself and he gets everything on this, that could have been a touchdown. Another seam route here. Now look how wide open. You get that ball to the outside, hifo has got a chance to go. But again, Wilson, think about how good he's going to be when he has an off season when he's healthy and he gets to get stronger and bigger and get reps. That's what he told us he's most excited about for after this season is the physical self-improvement as Talon Shumway, his senior from Lone Peak High School, has a first down. Wilson had a shoulder injury in high school. When he was at BYU, he was hampered by that shoulder injury. And then we won the job and became the guy. And guess what? Tells, tears up his thumb. thumb has pins in the thumb. As Quint mentioned, dealing with the grip issues and all of that that comes with it. So the self-improvement really was stunted this year for Wilson, who throws again to the sideline on first down to Micah Simon. And then you see throws like that, yeah. and you go, whoa, man, that guy is something. 
you know, he stands in the middle of the field to the far sideline and drops one out there. You see the shot of him, hospital, shoulder, bandage, surgery. Good news when you're in the hospital, if there is any good news, is you can watch all the rom-coms you watch. And so How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, I'm sure, was on the you, you think uh, You think he's going to have a few movie dates? Uh, he, he told us. He, lo he loves kind of the soft movies. He likes romantic comedies. Teenage heartthrob, Zach Wilson, on the move to throw for Bushman, trying to high point it and knocked away. Eugene Ford good play. got a hand in. Now, I, I get that he's into rom-coms, you know, or people call them chick flicks or whatever. Yeah. But to have him go back and say, hey, how to lose a guy in 10 days, see that throw? Great throw moving to his right. I mean, once you go how to lose a guy in 10 days, you're, it's, you know, along came Polly, right? That, so that's next. Baby face <laughs> sophomore can move his feet. Loves Sunday dinners with his family at home. Uh, a very nice young man who is now on the outside of his field getting to the 40-yard line. He's, he's got some teeth when he gets on the field. He's happy to run, happy to take contact. He's a talented guy, you know. He's a big man on campus, you know, and, and as I said, he's only going to get better. I mean, he hasn't had the offseason, the, the relaxed time to, to improve accuracy, to, to get in the weight room. In a year or two, we're going to be talking about him as one of the quarterbacks in the country. This is a trick play territory for BYU if they get a first down here on this third down. Yes. Got to convert it first. Not far from the red zone. They love to do that. Little shuffle to the outside. Picks up the first down. That is Aleva Hifo, who they are very willing to run. Another one of those seniors to move the sticks. BYU and Hawaii in their 32nd meeting of all time, dating back to 1930, before Hawaii was part of the Union. Were you surprised at how deep this rivalry is? Once we got here and we started talking to the coaches, you, you feel it. I mean, it's yeah. coming out of their pores and players and locals, and uh, part of it is because of what Lavelle Edwards was able to do to open up this recruiting ground for BYU. All the years together in the whack. Down the middle, wide open Bushman. Inside the five, first and goal. There is all of his talent on display. Absolutely. Six foot five, 250 pounds, soft hands. When you run him down the seam, linebackers can't stay with him. Wilson recognizes this quickly, puts the ball up high where he's got that long, long arm range, wide catch radius and some running skills after. He's, he's a talented, talented player. Potential uh, third round draft choice right now in NFL eyes. We brought in Mason Wake to play fullback and down to the one yard line to set up second down and goal. Good answering drive, Q. Yeah, and it was much needed. That earlier third down conversion was uh, gigantic because Wilson was struggling, didn't like the mojo on the far bench as they get baked in this sun over here, but uh, this drive makes them competitive in this game. It really turns the tenor of this game around. Assuming they finish it. Got a second and goal here. Katoa and Wake, that shove way in motion. And they'll run it for Katoa, who's in. Touchdown, BYU. Big, big drive, big finish. For them, they needed that. You know, talking to Kalani Sitake, talking to Jeff Grimes, the offensive coordinator, they said Katoa was the most important guy for this offense today. He's a he's a talented guy. He's a guy who originally was committed to Oregon State, but he flipped to BYU after he went on his mission trip, and it's become a real focal point of this offense. He's the guy that sets up everything for Wilson throwing the ball. He is the perimeter runner and the inside runner. Ron, you get the inkling that 14's not going to win it tonight here on Christmas Eve. <laughs> you just kind of get that sinking feeling. Look, look at the push up front by that offensive line. Blake Freeland, the right tackle, a freshman, does a great job crashing down that right side. This offensive line for BYU has, has been through some changes this season. We've got some young guys playing. 
but they're strong on the perimeter when they want to run to the edge. Hey, we've got football on Christmas Eve, but we have NBA on Christmas, the annual NBA holiday party, noon Eastern Celtics Raptors on ESPN. Maybe Brad Stevens will let Taco Ball play after he just conducted the orchestra. Then Bucks Sixers on ABC, Rockets Warriors, Clippers Lakers, and then cap it all off with Pelicans Nuggets 1030 on ESPN. All five games on the ESPN app. You can watch wherever you're celebrating Christmas and basketball. Teach all your older relatives how to use the app. Yeah, I was relieved to hear that LeBron and Anthony Davis are both now expected to play. That's good. Yep, good news. Uh, load management, the new buzzword in the NBA. As they fake the reverse and Lincoln Victor takes it across the 20 yard line as we take a look back at our expedient drive recap. Yeah, you know, Big plays during that drive really came through the air after you had your quarterback Wilson make a good play to the edge with his feet, knows how to bounce back and come back with a terrific throw down the field to his tight end, Bushman, which really, really set up Katoa to finish it off. Good push by that offensive line. Boy, the seams in this game are matchup nightmares. <laughs> Whether it be a slot receiver for Hawaii yeah. or a Bushman, the tight end for yeah. BYU. Yeah, if you didn't know what a seam was before this game, you do now. Oh, right? you're going to know. That's a beautiful ball right down the middle. A little more touch this time for JoJo Ward, the senior from Waco. So McDonald has shown the whole rainbow of what he can do so yeah. far today. Yeah, you know, he's he's been outstanding. I mean, a little half row comes back the other way and gets the ball over those long armed linebackers again between the hash. You know, his 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 numbers in the middle of the field are are fantastic. As his QBR rating when he throws outside the hash, he's like 24, 20, uh, 24 in the middle of the field, 90 outside the field. Down the middle again, and it's batted away this time. Incomplete. He wanted Bird, Bo Tanner was on the coverage yeah, that, and a second down. That ball hung up, it didn't have a clean spiral and, and caught a little breeze and hung up in the air forever. And that's what, been one of the few misses today for Cole McDonald. Quite honestly, down here, his height, you know, he reminds me a little of Jacob Eason, the way he stands tall in the pocket, but yeah. the decision-making and accuracy today, more like Jake Fromm. I, I, I couldn't be more impressed. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's done a nice job. Nice play by Bo Tanner to knock that ball down. I'm waiting for the adjustment for BYU defensively. What do you think it might be? You got to get your hands on those inside guys. They can't run free down the field. As we watch the release here, running free, smart, down the sideline. And he's inside the 10. He absolutely lambasted Troy Warner to set up first and goal. Man, oh man, are they laying it to him through the air. We told you this offense was fun, and they're looking deep first. They're not seven for the short throw. McDonald is looking deep to blitz them with the deep outside throw, the deep seam throw. Cole McDonald came in today 7,000 yards short of Cole Brennan, 10,000 of Timmy Chang. And striking distance seems to be the <laughs> phrase of the day. I mean, he is throwing bullseye after bullseye. You never know what's going up on the toad board when these two get together. Hawaii rapping on the door, leading 14 to 7 and driving with Cole McDonald, who has just been outstanding. Kelee Leakey is in as the tailback, and they will run with Peruta, who is just short of the goal line. So the Wildcat formation for Hawaii on the direct snap sets up second down and goal. And we are joined on the line by a guy who knows how to get you in from the one yard line, June Jones, longtime coach of Hawaii 1999 to 2007. Uh, what's it like for you to sit at home and watch your former players and your former program coaching now? Well, it, it makes me really proud. Uh, so many of those guys, uh, Brian, Craig, Abraham, I got a whole bunch of guys on the staff. Rolo, of course, last time in this game, you know, uh, threw, threw lights out. And uh, it's the reason there is even a Hawaii Bowl from, the, from years ago.
They're going to say McDonald was just short. June, you got a play that you can run from the half yard line right now? Hawaii could use yeah, it. Well, yeah, well, they're going to find a play, but I would throw it. You know how I am. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that, June, I think I remember a game when you ran it maybe once or twice. This is Rod, is that correct? I think you had. I think you had that game. You it was on ESPN. Uh, we didn't run the ball until there was three that's minutes right. left in the game. <laughs> Hawaii wants a timeout. Coach Rolo hustling down the sideline. So, charge timeout. Hawaii. Their first of the half. More with June Jones when we come back on a third down and goal. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Hawaii leading 14 to 7. We're joined on the phone line by June Jones, who coached Hawaii from 1999 to 2007. All right, what's this BYU rivalry like? We've heard so much about it. What's it like for you? Well, this BYU rivalry goes way back to the missionary families uh, on the North Shore and in Samoa. And, of course, uh, Dick Tomey uh, years. I mean, this was bigger than life. It was the, uh, the only game in Hawaii for many years. And I think that uh, 2001 year that Roller was a quarterback really, really uh, made it something special for all of Hawaii. They just got in, Coach. Touchdown for McDonald to make it 20-7. to seven. And, June, if I remember 2001, that was a BYU team that was undefeated and was perhaps overlooking you guys, talking about playing in a national championship game. And But did you have to, have to hit them up for, what, 72 points? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a heck of a game. They were undefeated. They were complaining about not getting them on the big bowls. And, of course, we had a pretty good team. And, and that game, uh, 72, I mean, I think of Shannon Harris. I think of Chad Owens. Uh, who set the record all-time history, 120 years of football, still holds the bowl game return yardage record in that game. And Rolo, I'll never forget the last pass he threw for a touchdown to Shannon Harris and Ashley. That, those were something special, and it was big for Hawaii. How about your guy Craig Stutzman with the punt? Punting the ball, getting ejected from the game. <laughs> Well, we had what we did. We had a seven, we had a 35-point uh, rule, I think, at that time. And I didn't allow him to ever celebrate. But I said, if we're ever up by 35, you can do whatever you want. And he elected to punt it in the, the stand. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is awesome. Hey, hey June, not many teams are committed to the run and shoot as Hawaii is, but. When you look around the NFL, you look around college football, you can't help but notice a lot of the run and shoot principles are everywhere. That, that's got to be satisfying for you. Well, Rod, it, it is. You know, I think back to 1987 when, when Jerry Glanville first hired me to from the USFL to go into the NFL, and they said so much that this will never work, it'll never work. Now it's part of every offense. In fact, when I watched New England, I, I watch so much of their four and five wideouts. Uh, everybody's doing some of what we do. And, uh, you know, Hawaii and Houston Roughnecks will be doing it full time. So, so I'm, I'm kind of jacked up about that. I was going to say, well, before we let you go, what's the XFL life like? Because we're going to see you on our airwaves back here, not in Hawaii colors, but with Houston in the XFL. Yeah, no, I'm really jacked up about it. We just got done with any camp. I'm really, really impressed with the quality of players. I'm really, uh, I got a chance to meet Vince McMahon uh, about three weeks ago, and uh, he's committed for, for basically, he said, his life to make this thing work. I think it's an unbelievable opportunity for so many players, so many coaches, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. I think the week after the Super Bowl is our first game. And you guys, ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC, of course, are a big part of the reason we're going to have success. So it's going to be fun. You're going to run the run and shoot? What are you doing? Uh, well, let me just say this. We, we will be throwing it uh, more than running it. 
I, June, I would expect no less than to see you throwing it around because it's in your DNA, and, man, you, you've helped change the game that way dramatically. Well, I appreciate it, Rod. You, you must have over the last 20 years done I don't know how many of our games, and uh, you kind of know what, what, it, what we're going to do. And it'll be fun to, to win and change, uh, you know, and just get it done at the level, uh, professional level, that, that really is going to be kind of fun to watch grow over the next four or five years. Well, we look forward to seeing you and everything you do offensively. Uh, appreciate the time. June Jones, enjoy the rest of the game, all right? Thanks, Jason. Aloha, guys. Aloha. Thank you. One of the great guys in coaching, one of the creative minds in play calling, June Jones. Oh, Bushman one-handed. Yes, sir. How about that? Wow. We, we talked about his ability, his talent. Big guy, soft hands, and you tend to underestimate his catching radius. He's got long arms, which really helps him as a blocker. But watch here. Watch how he extends this big right paw out. Pulls this thing back in. That's a terrific catch. They're using him today more in the slot. Sometimes he's a single wide receiver. He's not been attached to the line like a true tight end very much today. Just sort of grazing there. That's one of the keys, Quint, is figuring out where he is at the start of a play. They'll run it on first down for Tyler Algier, who was a running back to start the year, moved to linebacker, and now back to running back with all the injuries they've had. And uh, we asked uh, Tuiaki, the defensive coordinator for BYU, if he fought Algier going back to offense. He said, no, but maybe Tyler did a little bit. He loved <laughs> linebacker, but he's willing to do whatever for the yeah, team. It's actually more fun to hit than be hit. Uh, yeah, surprisingly <laughs> enough, right? <laughs> Algier with the injuries to Tyson Williams, to Asupa, who was the starting running back before Batoa took over. Down the middle, Dax Milne inside the 15-yard line. So the sophomore sets up BYU nicely. Do you believe, you know, the next one? We, we've heard the BYU people talk about Wilson. Watch this throw. On time, and look at that thing. Perfect accuracy. Receiver has a chance to continue to do something after he catches it. That's beautiful. For folks at home, that doesn't get talked about enough. If you can easily run after the catch, that is an absolute keeper as Wilson finds Katoa to set up second down. You know, my, my first college coach was Bill Walsh. And in practice every day, he had the quarterbacks focusing on not getting the ball to the receiver, but on the upfield shoulder, on this number, in this area, so they can turn this, to keep them running, so that they didn't have to jump or break stride or anything. And the great quarterbacks, you know, the, the Joe Montanas, the Steve Youngs, those guys, they did that stuff perfectly. Consistently. Yes, over, over and, and over. over. Yeah. Katoa. Inside the five, and it's funny you mentioned Steve Young because Zach Wilson, I'm sure he's got other cool people in his cell phone, but after the Tennessee game, he got a couple of texts from Steve Young saying, hey, kid, good job beating an SEC team. You see the way his his face lit up? He's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I get to tell Steve Young texted me. That's right. I mean, can you imagine looking That's at cool. your phone as a quarterback, yeah. especially at BYU, and saying, oh, text from Steve Young. Also, mom texted me. <laughs> A lot of Katoa on the drive. Wilson leaning into it. And he is knocking on the door. No signal yet. I mean, BYU says touchdown. He's really in. The whole pile's in. Yeah, yeah quick. He's, he's not, really in. How can he not be in? Everybody's in. He's, he's in the light blue. He was so far in, the refs kind of lost sight of him. <laughs> no. Well, Quinn, is that the first time you've had the touchdown call first down on the field? He's Clock running back on the sideline, the and they still can't the find him. It, it, look at that. He was in by five feet. Well, Q, you're talking about an offensive line where Thank you. hardly anybody is under six foot six, and everybody's over 300 pounds, and they are wearing out that smaller defensive front for Hawaii, particularly short yardage and goal line. And suddenly, this game looks like it's going to be a scoring fest. You know what that was, guys. 
That was how to lose a guy in two yards. The ruling on the field on the previous play is touchdown. Uh, that's not that good. ruling it, is under it review. It disappeared. Yeah, true. True. That's how you're doing. All right. They're going to review it. Quint, uh, uh, you're going to have the replay answer, too. This is a frivolous too. review. <laughs> he, he was wedged in between the big offensive guards in the center. Uh, MP, who's had a strong season, and he kind of disappeared. He was engulfed in blue. It looked like a big wave today on Waikiki, well, and, Jason. And MP is the short guy, 6'4", 300. The guards around him, 6'7", 310. He's engulfed, and they kind of lose sight of him. But he, he's in by a, I don't know, three or four feet. And uh, tell me how you're gonna. Yeah, tell me how you're gonna get any evidence to overturn this. Well, you, you can't. I mean, you got a 200-pound quarterback in the midst of 900 pounds of offensive linemen. Yeah, it's, it's not going to work out yeah. very well for. And the you're trying to find that little brown football. Good luck with that. Yeah, it's it, it's a t it, it's got to stand, right? I mean. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field of touchdown is confirmed. Would have given Tim O'Day a lot of bowl season points yeah. if he came on the microphone and said, after reviewing the play, everyone was in the end zone. These wonderful MAC officials just enjoying their time in the sun here, having not to be in DeKalb or <laughs> Athens. Come on. Or Kalamazoo this DeKalb, time of year. DeKalb's in my neighborhood. People like DeKalb. It's a tropical locale. 21-14. I know you and Q are having a good time, but focus for a moment here. Uh -huh, yeah. BYU is back in this Time thing, the and Bushman's had two big catches on two drives to get him right back in this. We'll check the focus after this. Thank you. Uh -huh. ESPN celebrating 150 years of college football. SoFi Hawaii Bowl. Brought to you by SoFi. Save, spend, earn, borrow, and invest all in one app. Marriott Hawaii, the best locations on all the best beaches and the best deals. Visit MarriottHawaii.com and AT&T. Look, the whole island chain is a water park, so you don't necessarily need a water park, but that's wet and wild here. The only problem for Hawaii is sometimes they do have to play road games and go somewhere else. Uh, this this is, is just wonderful yeah, out yeah. here. And great hospitality from the bowl folks, and you look at uh, the wrong ticket. I, oh, oh, the Gator fan, I see. They had the wrong <laughs> ticket. That's I, you're, a, you're a little west of your game. But, I mean, you think about the travel. For yeah. Hawaii, you look at them compared to the travel from like the Seattle Mariners of Major League Baseball. They do that 58,000 miles wow. in 81 games. Hawaii wow. is at 35,000 in six road games. Wow. Remember, that's that's a college team, yes. amateurs traveling more than pros. Yeah. Uh, the they NFL. don't fly charter. Yeah. Right. Everything's commercial. Yeah. So that that really That's impacts. Hard travel. Yeah, that that impacts the way they operate as a program. What you can do on Sundays and Mondays, how the players and staff, how they feel. Uh, you think about the hours they spend in planes. Q, it means not coming back after the game. It means you're waiting around to the next flight the next day. Yeah, Sunday morning you fly. You basically Sunday's your off day, and you spend it in in 32F on a plane. As second down is coming up, but it also impacts recruiting. I mean, we were talking to the offensive coordinator Brian Smith about that, and he said, "Look." When we go, say, to Nevada, we'll drop a couple coaches off on the way in San Francisco, and they'll go recruit in San Francisco, wherever it is. You have to pick your spots when you go to the mainland. Yeah, yeah, it's a big deal. The other big deal for BYU defensively now is adjustments, keeping the ball out of the middle of the field. Q, get your hands on receivers. Don't give them the free releases. They're not pressing the slots on the top of your screen. Yeah, Gowalaku at the bottom is up in press coverage, and the slots are fairly open. Second down and Reed setting up a third down and medium to long. Yeah, when, when you don't get your hands on a slot receiver and you allow him that free release up the middle, it puts stress on your safety, it puts stress on your corner, it widens everything, it gives McDonald the option of looking outside and throw deep. He can look inside and throw deep. So you have to constrict that and keep those slot guys from stressing your your safety. So why not do it? Is it speed concerns that they're not pressing? 
No. I, you, you, I don't know why they're not doing it. You've got to get your hands on these guys. Tonga's off the line, 95. Something's up here. Yeah, he's walking up to the line and walking back. And now he's undercut as McDonald gets it free to the outside and sharks for a first down for Hawaii. You know, when we watch tape, you know, we, we, we put on San Diego State, we put on Boise State, and both those defenses really worked on trying to beat up the receivers and keep them out of the middle of the field. Now, now BYU hasn't done a lot of that. Outside throw here works for a first down, but I, I think as we get to the second half, you'll see BYU adjust and try and find a way to be more physical, uh, to get more in the face of the receivers, and to force McDonald to throw outside the hashes where his accuracy tends to fall off a little bit. He pulls it there, sidesteps Peely, whips it down the middle and turned his receiver around. Second down. Good adjustment by BYU. One of the few times we've seen them bring pressure. They're not big on blitzing. They did this time to affect the quarterback. And then you see the single coverage. Again, you've got a safety trying to match up with a premier receiver who can run by you. That's Hayden Livingston, who is not on the depth chart for BYU, but they have the injury to leave. Moore came off earlier. So they're shorthanded in the defensive backfield. Second down for McDonald. Down the sideline, wide open, JoJo Ward. Inside the 15, he burned Golanaku. 47 yards. Well, Ward had man-to-man -man coverage, used a double move to get by Gowalaku. Now, Gowalaku is their best man-for-man -man cover guy. And he tried to press him, and the double move, kind of a stop and go, allowed Ward to keep going. And look at the ball that McDonald put up yeah. there. Let him go get it. Rod, uh, that was as beautiful a pass as I have seen from field level all season. It was a rainbow, just a gorgeous arc. That will make you smile if you're a quarterback person, and that will not. He goes down. J.J. Nowigwe sacks McDonald. 6'5", 260. Nwigwe ran through his blocker, and in that run and shoot, your quarterback gives you a little half roll. He rolls right into the pressure. Right where you saw Elm Manning trying to hold off Nwigwe. The BYU team has not brought much pressure this year. They're tied for 125th in sacks. That's number 13. Yeah, it's, it's not their style. They are primarily a drop eight cover team or a drop seven, rush three or four. Miles Reed on the run to set up third down. Miles Reed, by the way, is one of the guys who helps recruit players to here at Hawaii. He is one of the top level recruiting hosts. He likes to have fun, big personality, and you almost have to have a big personality to play for Nick Rolovich because he, he'll dress up in costumes. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this about him. I've not seen another running back this year, his size, better at pass protection. Is that right? Oh, he's only about 180 pounds. He doesn't care if you are 250, 260 coming in. He will stick his nose in there and throw his body into it to protect his quarterback over and over again. They go empty this time. Hunt fake, McDonald gets grabbed down. The ball came loose, however, there was a whistle as well. Zach Daw pulled it away from him, and it'll be a BYU forced fumble and turnover. He just crowbarred it free from his paws. You saw the pump fake by McDonald. Now, when he brings the ball Green back the down, field, he holds it down low. Watch how low this ball is. And there you see Doug. He's like, ball? Ball? I can just take this away from you. This is a direct quote from Zach Daw from earlier in the year. Tackling is kind of a treat for me. <laughs> Time out on the field for media. <laughs> and it looked like it right there. I mean, he just swallowed the football. BYU will try and tie on this drive when we come back as we get the ball for Daw somehow.
So Zach Daw has described a high confidence factor winning one on one and it comes from his background of wrestling. He was a state champion wrestler at Pleasant Grove High School in Utah. Question After is though, the play, will the he keep the ball? The ball? And the answer is McDonald's knee was down. You just saw the knee go down while they were wrestling. And if it's an alternating possession, essentially, while the knee goes down for the quarterback, he's going to keep the ball. And that's what plays here. Yeah. You know, and keep in mind, this this was huge for Hawaii. You won nine games, but they've been the worst team in the country in turning over the football. And they just avoided one right there. 30 turnovers coming in. Minus one turnover margin per game, which is a massive number, as Meskel sends it fly into the goalposts and through. Hawaii from 46 makes it a 10-point game off the sack, but no fumble, and that is big news for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, who lead by 10. Think about how many games that team could have won had they been not the worst team in the country turning the ball over. Oh, I mean, you, you look at a nine-win season overall. I mean, this was a very strong season. Oh, every week, what do coaches all talk about? Take care of the football. If we don't turn it over, we win. They turned it over more than anybody else and won nine games. Yeah, I, I mean, and went to the Mountain West Championship game for the first time ever. So many laurels for this team this year. And so many teams that have had turnaround. Full Mania rolls on Thursday. Two more games that we know are going to be entertaining. The Walk-Ons Independence Bowl for Eastern. Basically another home game for Louisiana Tech from Ruston. It's in Shreveport, not far. They'll take on Manny Diaz in Miami. You talk about a bonkers season. Miami's had one, losing yeah. to rival, quote unquote, FIU. And then Pittsburgh Eastern Michigan in the Quick Lane Bowl at Ford Field in Detroit. Pitt early on had a stab at Penn State, couldn't finish it. The analytics police were out for Pat Narduzzi, <laughs> and they end up in a ball game anyway. You do not want the analytics police siren coming after you. <laughs> Nick Rolovich, by the way, Hawaii head coach, yeah. is a big analytics guy. He, he's a believer, but you know what the analytics don't get. My guy who's playing left tackle can't block that guy across from him. Yeah. We're not going to get that yard. They try and bake that in. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you and Rolovich can handle that separately during baseball season. We take a look at the uh, SoFi by the numbers here with 5.50 to go. Second quarter with the uh, music for the SoFi behind the numbers. Uh, you think it's a passing game so far? Well, we, we said for Hawaii to have a shot to win this game, they need a big, big passing game. Day, and they're getting it so far. Wilson, Aleva Hifo, he's got it just short of midfield at the 49 yard line. Hifo, oh. the very reliable senior. Terrific body control, great ball skills there, turning in the air to find it. Wilson putting the ball up, giving him a chance and man coverage to make a play. This is well done. Watch, watch the adjustment here. That is nice. I like Hifo. I like him as a player, a senior. I hope he gets a shot in some NFL camp. Swiss Army knife type player. Bushman certainly will get a chance, and he rampages through two Hawaii players to set up another first down. And Bushman has been in the middle of every good drive for BYU. You know, find him coming across, get, give him the ball, put it up high, let him use those Big long arms to pull it in. He was instrumental in the first touchdown drive, the last one, and now he's got another big catch to get them deeper into Hawaii territory. Trick play. Micah Simon wants to throw. He does for Shumway. And it's incomplete. There is that just outside the red zone inkling for Sitake and his offensive coordinator Grimes to run the trick stuff. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that in taking that shot, they haven't gone more towards uh, Wilson, the, the side where Ferris, the starting corner, is out as opposed to working that side now. Come back here. As long as you avoid 18 Davis, the corner, that's the way to go for BYU. Katoa with the cutback to set up a third down. Quint, to your point about Hifo, by the way, he's gotten more acquainted with special teams, he told us earlier this year, which certainly serves him well in the NFL future. Yeah, and punt returner talked to us about the challenges of catching punts and how 
underestimated that is for the common fan at home. But he also told us that he's terrified of amusement parks. Speedy rides. Wait, I'm not sure how wait, that what? agrees with being a punt returner. What? I mean, I, I understand roller coasters, but amusement parks? He yeah. avoids amusement parks at all costs. Yeah, he doesn't like, he don't want to be conned into a, a thrill ride. Wilson on the run, zigzagging through the defense, and Wilson finds space inside the 20. That play was designed to get to the edge, and they had the edge. Great blocking again on that edge. Make sure you get your, your tackle, pull, pull them outside there. Chandon Herring, 77, getting out there, leading the way, and easily helping his quarterback pick up the first down. And now you can take a shot if you want to, right? You're probably going to get man coverage down here. MP, by the way, on that play, the center who they think so highly of was out there kicking out as well. Wilson to throw with a line drive for Mill inside the 15. Yeah, that's the run pass option of the offense. Quick read by Wilson to determine whether he should give the ball or fire it outside. Injured player is Kai on the field for a defensive injury. The freshman from the St. Louis school. This will also be a media timeout. So Kaneshiro down, and we will step aside with BYU driving. ESPN, home of the New Year Six and the college football playoff. College football playoff semifinals Saturday. ESPN of the ESPN app, LSU Oklahoma, the Heisman winner against the Sooners, who are a little short-handed with a couple suspensions. Then Ohio State, Clemson, and the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. The winners go to the national championship January 13th on ESPN. Trickeration for BYU, as expected. Simon turns the corner, and he's in. Touchdown, Micah Simon for BYU. Nice job of BYU setting them up for this. They've run the jet sweep. They come that way, start with it, and then bring Micah Simon back on the reverse. Jet sweep action one way, come back with a little inside reverse, and there's Micah Simon. That's exactly right, right Rod. I'm on the Hawaii sideline. All the defensive coaches were saying 15, 15, motion, motion. When they get the coaches, when the coaches are duped too, you're probably going to score. And yeah. Again, by the way, on that play, Empey was downfield yeah. leading the way. Well, you know, Empey was downfield. You get a good block from 76 the chance downfield. Excellent call. And Jeff again, Grimes, yeah, yeah that, 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 that jet sweep cue, such a staple of the offense. Everybody is so alerted to it. Great call down there to sort of give them the cheese. Yeah, second and medium. Yeah. It caught me off guard coming on second and medium. You know, Jeff Grimes, the offensive coordinator for BYU, has really taken to the islands here. He's taken to home with this play calling and, and how clever he's gotten. Uh, as we've talked to Jeff Grimes over the course of the couple games we've seen BYU, the new offensive coordinator, he's told us that he's got a little bit of a look-alike, that his daughter has even noticed and her volleyball teammates have noticed. They say he looks like the guy from Friends, and we were like, well, Matthew Perry, what are you, you know, what are you talking about? The answer is Tom Selleck. And when you look at him in the Aloha shirt, and then you look at Magna <laughs> P.I., it's very, very close. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I get a dead it. ringer. I get it. Absolutely. Do you think the music's playing in Jeff's headset? I think he's just going with the man. <laughs> Where, where's Higgins? My goodness. That's good stuff. 24-21, your score as Hawaii will get it back. And this return for Lincoln Victor. The freshman has him just short of the 30-yard line. Magnum P.I., wow. That's old school. Yeah. 1980s. Going 80 back. to 88. Right here in Honolulu. I wonder how, what it was like for him to walk up and down Waikiki this, this week. Magnum, good to see you, man. It's been a while. I mean, he is. It was funny as he was telling us the story about his his daughter's uh, volleyball teammates because the, the the younger generation no knows idea. him. Right, knows him as yeah. Monica's boyfriend yeah. from Friends. Nothing about Magnum PI, Not but just friends. Yeah. yeah. Not three men and a baby. Nothing. Just just friends. So Hawaii and McDonald 
The throw again, and Smart has had a huge game to the chagrin of Syracuse basketball fans. His father, Keith, beat Syracuse in 1987 and is not exactly a hero. Time out on the field for an offensive injury. Injured player is L. Manning, the left tackle, who had 29 straight starts to open his career, including today, an All-Mountain West second-team guy, and he would be a huge loss. Yeah, sophomore from Glendale, Arizona, has, has really been a mainstay over there and, and done a great job all season. Second-team Mountain West Conference selection this year. The anchor of that offensive line. They've had four separate right guards, but he has been a staple on the left side as you see Nuuanu Kuhiiki coming over. He would be the first tackle in the freshman from here in Honolulu. And Manning is up. Hey, the Mercedes Benz halftime report coming up shortly. John Brickley, Emmanuel Acho, Trevor Maddich will look ahead to the college football playoff semifinals and we will have analysis of the New Year's six from them as well. It's going to be a good Saturday. Yeah it's it, look all these games and this is why this game is so special because sometimes you do have a random team seeing a random team and that's intriguing in its yep. own right when you get these two rivals together for a bowl game it's a major bonus on their schedule. Well, How about the story June Jones told us about just the history of how big this game has always been. Hit. It dates back to 1930. I, I didn't even realize Hawaii had a football team back in 1930. And think about what the travel was like for BYU. I, I did some research. I couldn't find much. But back then, Colorado State played here at Hawaii. It took them 11 days to get here. 1930? 1930. Hawaii wasn't even a state then, right? No, exactly. By 29 years. How, 11 days to get here? That's what it took Colorado State. Wow. I mean, literally row the boat. P.J. Flex got nothing on the travel against Hawaii in 1930. McDonald whips it first down. Charge inside the 45. Oh, you want to talk about threading a needle. That, that was a throw. And he's throwing into eight defenders. And those windows are really, really small. Look at that one. Straight over the top release. The ball comes out. The nose of the football's tilted down, but he, he is straight over the top like a like a fastball pitcher. Kind of reminds me of Aaron Brooks a little bit. Remember him from Virginia? Yes. Aaron Brooks came from low and then yeah, over well, the top. And he, he's got a quick release, but it's a long delivery. Yep. He, he holds the ball yeah, down low and brings it up and around. So it's it's a little long, not, not ideal, but he's quick with it. Uh, how does that affect him in his future, possibly NFL? Hey, look, those guys at that level in the NFL, that ball, you do that little hitch thing, that ball's going the other way. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pick six. McDonald, a junior, so one year of eligibility remaining. There have been some rumblings about his possible NFL draft stock, and Quint mentioned earlier, it's sort of all over the map as he throws another strike to JoJo Ward. And a first down. Look, scouts are going to love his size. They're going to love his arm strength. They're going to love his toughness. They're going to have some questions about the inconsistency at times where, you know, he's thrown a lot of picks. He's thrown the ball in situations where he probably should not have. His accuracy is a little bit down outside the hash. But overall, somebody's going to be really happy that they get him. He's thrown for 300 yards in the first half <laughs> yeah. of a bowl game, by the way. Absolutely. Holding on to the ball, waiting, and it is intercepted. Troy Warner goes down to the ground to pull it in. And, and he barely held on to it. Caught it between his legs. Did Smart run the wrong route? The ruling on the field is interception. First down, BYU. Yeah, that's a catch. Yeah. Now, now that the ball was high over the middle. Anytime that ball is high over the middle, it's not accurate, and you have the risk of that tip drill. The reason I said maybe wrong route, and watching it again, I don't think so, but McDonald was looking at that look in his eye as though there was some miscommunication. But well, 
you can oh. see from that replay. Oh, he, he didn't get that one. He fans, had, fans here think that ball hit the turf. I think it did too. He had Bird down the middle of the field, and he chose to go back away from Bird. And that really ball was high. The previous play was and at the end of that, BYU, that ruling is under further review. I think Warner did a good job of acting, but it looked like that ball hit the turf. You can see, by the way, by the response of the crowd here, why this place has been known to actually rock and move. They were booing when the announcement of the replay came across. I've seen this place move You're back out? in 2007. Friday night after Thanksgiving, Boise came in, undefeated Hawaii and June Jones with Colt Brennan beat him. This place was sold out, Jason. And they used to play baseball here, so the stands were on rails, and the stands were shaking and moving. It was one of the best regular season games that, that I've ever been lucky enough to cover. That was a team that went to the Sugar yeah, Bowl and lost to, yeah, that's a drop. I'm with you. They lost to Matt Stafford, no Sean Moreno, and Georgia that year. As the officials will look it over. By the way, Quint mentioned this was a triple-A baseball stadium. Barry Bonds played here. Tony mm -hmm. Gwynn played here wow, yeah. on the way to the major leagues. Now remember, when you review this, You've got to have indisputable, indisputable video, video evidence. evidence. Is it indisputable in this case to overturn the call of interception? I think so. That ball goes through his hands, and then he tries to trap it with his knees on the ground. And I see, I don't see hands between the ball and the ground. I don't see knees between the ball and the ground. I see the knees on the side of the ball. To me, that's not possession. Look at that ball drops down. That's. That's a drop. Big play. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field of interception is being changed to incomplete pass. Overturn. The ball will return to the 33-yard line where it will be second and 10. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 1 minute 32 seconds. 132, please. Good call, Rod. Now the challenge for Thank you. The McDonald clock will start on the snap. is when he's got Bird down the middle of the field like that, he's your best receiver. Look that through before you come back off to someone shorter. He had Bird running free for the touchdown. So you're saying take the deep route. Well, you know, and June Jones would tell you this. You want to be aggressive in this thing. You want to look deep and then come back. And you want to really put the fear in the defense about the deep, deep throw. Hey, look, our first penalty of the 2019 SoFi Hawaii Bowl. Full start. Offense number 63. Five-yard penalty, second down. That's Taonga Tuulima, the junior center. First penalty at 132 in the first half. We can get used to this. That's uh, our gift to the audience after <laughs> being patient all season with a lot of flags. We, Christmas Eve, give you a game with a few flags. That's our present to you. Thank you. As the sun has gone away in a trade for that first penalty. To the sideline, JoJo Ward with nobody in the vicinity. And that breakdown sends him to the 25. But if you're BYU, you're okay with that. Those little check downs, flat throws, that's the cheese. You don't want to get so caught up in those that you give up the deep throw. You want to react to those. So BYU defensively is okay with that. Just keep taking away that deep throw, particularly that seam route that post route in the middle. They're okay with it as long as Peely makes the tackle, which he did. McDonald, outside first down. Little zone read action. Not a traditional part of the run and shoot offense, but every offense now seems to have some quarterback run game in it. Quarterback reads the edge. Doesn't give the ball, figures he can outrun the uh, defensive end or linebacker to the edge there, and he does. Two timeouts for Hawaii. They'd like to score, obviously, and take this clock down to zeros. Question is, will they score too soon with BYU holding three timeouts as well? McDonald down the same touchdown. Charged from 18 yards away, and Hawaii's put up a 30-burger. I think we're wearing out the seams on this field. Good look by McDonald. Saw the matchup right off the bat, looking to his slot to his left, 
He's got three, look at that, free release right down the middle of the field between the safety and the linebacker. Can't make it any easier than that. Can't make it any easier. You got a slot guy and nobody gets a hand on him. That's the reserve linebacker, Max Tooley, who was closest. But June Jones mentioned the name Chad Owens, a former Hawaii All-American. He is the cousin of Jason Matthew Sharsh. The transfer from Santa Barbara Community College has a touchdown. And Cole McDonald, who's got a multiple 3,000-yard season to his name, has 300-plus yards already this evening. We talked about that bowl game last year and that this game for McDonald was about redemption. How do you spell redemption? You spell it E-I-E-I-O, which he heard a lot as a kid and sort of said, you know, you gotta, you gotta let yourself be made fun of. You gotta make fun of yourself. You know, your last name, McDonald, that's gonna happen. Well, you, know, you know what you can say now? You can say, my hair is better than Trevor Lawrence's hair at Clemson. But yeah, I, you don't, you don't want to start that fight though. People on social media are gonna. Yeah, well, folks will, will take sides on that one. I'm just saying, he, he has an argument that he's got the best hair in college football. Yeah, let's look through the flip book for Cole McDonald. You know, he's, he's sort of clean shaven and all that, a little flex of blonde, and then the dreads start to build, and in 2019, here this year, in honor of the former quarterback here, Moniz. Did his eyes get bluer as his hair got blonder? You know, I think that's what happens when you live in Hawaii. Oh, okay. That you look at the ocean so much, your eyes get a deeper blue. As a flag comes down on the kickoff, as we try to make up for lost time, in this first half. Crowd's really getting into it. Hawaii's special teams trying to whoop up the crowd as they run by those old baseball dugouts near the end zone. There's a lot of pride here. A lot of pride. Rod, you talk about motivation in bowl games all the time. Offside, kicking team number 42. The five yard penalty be added onto the end to kick. First down, BYU. The hungry team, the motivated team so far has been Hawaii looking for that 10th win, looking to beat their big brother, so to speak. Yeah, Key, look, if you're going to a bowl game and you're not excited about the opponent you're playing or where you're playing or what's at stake, those extra bowl practices can be a real drag. Yeah, they're excited about all three of those things you listed, both yep. of these teams. Wilson with pressure coming. A little sidewinder and it's second down. Both coaches in this game, Sitake and Rolovich, mentioned how much this island has given to them and how much this land is important to them. Kalani Sitake growing up here, mm -hmm. Rolovich playing his college ball here. Well, Rolovich said, you know, he owes so much to this island. And, and you find that's a common theme with coaches who coach here, Dick Tomei, June Jones. There's a Leva Hifo on this run to set up third down, and BYU will get it after halftime, by the way. All those coaches embrace the culture and everything Hawaii has to offer, and, and I think that's why they were they were all successful here. Our timeout, BYU, their first of the half. There's a level of culture and understanding of other values that Nick Rolovich talked to us about the importance of having a kid get that in order for him to want to come here. The one phrase he used with us is, it's got to be the kid's choice right. to come here. Yeah. You've got to almost have it in your heart to play here. But when you do, they can build a special thing, as we saw just 12 years ago with June Jones. Well, and Sataki talked about that as well, having you know grown up on the North Shore here. And he, he lists Provo and you know the North Shore as both of his home. He's from those two places, what he, what he likes to say. Ba'ie is the area of the North Shore where Kalani Sitake grew up. Playing in the park, pick up football. Wilson to throw on third down, and he does get it away. And a broken tackle sets up a first down for Micah Simon and BYU. That's a major change of this tenor late in the first half with that first down. Great patience by Wilson extending the play things were breaking down he keeps sliding and Time he's waiting for, for something injury. to open he gets Micah Simon out there but because he extended that play it opened the possibility to keep this drive going 
injured party is Corey Bethley, the sophomore, the academic All Mountain West safety for Hawaii. He will come off, and Donovan Dalton will come in. A sophomore from the state of Minnesota who has upgraded his climate. Wilson on the roll. Wilson chucks it down the field and a diving try by Dax Milne, and he brought it in first down. Yeah, Wilson hard that was, is to do. Yeah, Wilson was destroyed after he threw it and drew a flag. Yeah, but Q, do you know how hard that is to make that throw? Well, that's the throw that you're not supposed to make, right. by the way. You're throwing back across your body over the middle of the field, but it right. was a, a thing of beauty. His mobility definitely stands out in the way Jeff Grimes, their offensive coordinator, likes to roll him out. Darius Muasau was coming in. And that's the flag you're talking about, Quinn. Tim O'Day, what you got? Personal foul, late hit, defense number 48. The 15 yard penalty be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, Muasau was in there first. We'll see who got the actual hit in on Wilson. Yeah, that was yep. Pritchard coming Correction. in. Yep, Pritchard. The foul was on defender number two. Defender number two. Hawaii has called their second charge timeout, timeout of Hawaii the to talk it over defensively. Well, I said to you earlier that it doesn't look like 14 is going to win this game. Don't really get the feeling 31 is <laughs> going to do it either. But this is what it should be. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, this is what you want in a bowl game. This is what you want when you come to Hawaii. You hang out, you have a good time, you go to the ball game, and guess what? The ball is in the air, a bunch of points are scored. Yeah, surf for a little bit, ride a wave of offense, and uh, we'll take a look at the Bowl Challenge Cup standings. They're brought to you by Progressive. An early strong start for the Pac-12 at one and all. In our standings. Who you got? Who are you going to take? you got to pick one conference. Who's going to win? I've never been good at, at picking the conferences who are likely to win this. It, the last couple of years, I believe, hasn't it been a group of five conference, you know, Conference yep. USA, Mountain West, you know. The Americans. And, and again, we, we talk about motivation, you know, and motivation shows up in those games. I'll go with a group of five conference to win it again. Which one? You gotta pick one right now, you're Why? on the record. Because I said so. <laughs> Don't I'm reject just, the premise. I'm just trying to go one and zero this week. Okay. Wilson scanning, Wilson hit low and down he goes at the 19. It was Derek Thomas, the junior from Huntington Beach. BYU has struggled in the red zone time out, this BYU. season. Second of the half. 51% of the time they get touchdowns and ideally you want to be north of 70%, somewhere around 75% would be excellent. And they've struggled. That was a coverage sack. First sack of the game for Hawaii defensively. And now 34 seconds, second down 13. Yeah, here's an interesting thing for BYU though. Normally in this position, you think in terms of, I've got a field goal in my back pocket. I want points before the end of the half. They've had such trouble kicking the ball. I'm not sure that Sataki is gonna be thinking, I got three points in my back pocket. I may have to be real aggressive and try to get a touchdown. He wouldn't commit to a kicker before the game. He said it depended on the hash mark, whether it's Jake Oldroyd or Skyler Southam. So we'll see. Hefo in motion, second down for Wilson. This is Hefo, who is dropped at the 20-yard line. Now, again, in terms of game BYU management and the mic, final time out of the half. Good call with the timeout and figure this out for your third down call. Are you going to take a shot to the end zone? You trust your quarterback for that? Or are you afraid that if you lose any yardage at all, you cannot make a field goal and you need to get three points out of this? You can't waste this drive. They've only hit five of their last 13 field goal attempts and had some chip shot misses to finish the season at San Diego State into a little bit of a wind here 
left to right. I was going to say, I felt the wind up here in our booth picking up a little bit. Yes. It's somewhat open air. Has Absolutely. that happened recently? Absolutely. These clouds have rolled in, and, and the breeze from left to right has picked up. Yeah, this would be about a 37-yard field goal from here if they don't gain anything on this third down. They can Hefo or Bushman if you're BYU. Well, Can't take a sack. Yeah, he, Bushman to me is the most reliable uh, target. He's the guy they trust the most in these situations. He's also the biggest target. 6'5 at about 245, 250. Here comes the crowd. Third and 15. They play well off the receivers. Wilson turns it to the far side and misfired for Simon. You kick it, what's your choice? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's your trick play you pulled out here on third down. You got to at least try to get something out of this. And, you know, you can't cut your kicker and hire somebody else. You can go, you can go scholarship hunting in the offseason, but you got a couple guys on roster. You got to do something with them, right? The split second transfer portal has not been invented yet. <laughs> so Oldroyd's going to come out from the right hash from 37 to make it a one score out, game. Hawaii, a timeout for Hawaii. This will be a full timeout. Seconds. Now, the question is you know, if he misses this, you'll have 18 seconds. Would you think about keeping the timeout? and maybe trying to jam on the gas pedal a couple plays to get yourself into range well given the way this first half has gone you can score two more touchdowns in 18 seconds that's what i'm saying yeah <laughs> the run and shoot mindset says always be aggressive <laughs> that's that's the word that nick rolovich used with us is aggressive so the the use of the timeout there to well, ice a kicker well you know he wasn't sold on being aggressive until he had a visit with mike leach and mike leach basically said to him if you believe in this thing, man, you got to go all in. Was that one of the six-hour conversations he had on the phone with Mike Leach? Because that's <laughs> actually happened. I, I, how can you have a six-hour conversation with, with anyone? But those two had it. The, it. He's the island version of Mike Leach. Yeah. Nick Rolovich, very curious, very intriguing neurons up there sparking in that brain for the Hawaii head coach. Oldroyd after being iced on Oahu. Bad snap, Oldroyd strikes it, and it is good. 31-24 with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Hey, Hayden Livingston with a whale of a hold there, by the way, to get Oldroyd an opportunity to boot that ball. Yeah, and a great confidence boost for him, and great confidence by... Sataki shown in him, giving him this opportunity. That's a good save. Yeah, that is, for people who've not done that, have you ever have you ever tried to hold? Rod, have you done that? In your not path, well holding, but yeah. you've done it. I've done it. Yes. How hard is that to do what we just saw? Well, catching it isn't easy. It's the timing and spinning and getting the laces laces away that makes it difficult. Not everybody can do it, and I couldn't. You were, you were really bad at no, it? No, I mean, I, I was serviceable. People were better, so I, see. I gladly stepped aside. BYU gets the ball at a halftime, so trying to keep it right there. 31-24, the 32nd meeting all time between BYU and Hawaii. BYU has a satellite campus in this state. They've recruited the Hawaiian Islands and... The Pacific Islands vary substantially in their history as Lincoln Victor has a seam. He shucks one tackler and finds his way to the 35. How aggressive capital A are they going to be? Win, Rod, 12 seconds, what you got? First play determines it. Just chuck it deep, right? First play, if you can get something out of it, they'll come right back and take a shot to put themselves uh, in position for a field goal. If they get nothing on the first play, they're going to go to halftime. Oh, no, they're just going to go to halftime. They like 31 that? points. Huh. Hey, by the way, uh, bowl season continues on. And that music means we are going to, in the second half, give you a promo that you are not going to believe. That was a tease of I a like promo. That. Okay. You don't know <laughs> what you're going to see here in the SoFi Hawaii Bowl. If any of the games are going to be like this, they're going to be dandies. Quint is downstairs. 
Coach, how, how would you best five describe? How would you best describe the play of your quarterback? Oh, he's been playing really good. You know, the sacks I really didn't like, and I thought our receivers have made some big catches. I'd like to get the run game going a little bit. Defense needs another stop, and uh, we got another set, another half because BYU gets the ball. Um, that was a big, big drive for us getting that, that touchdown before half. This seems like a scoring type game where, where whoever can make more stops. What's the biggest challenge your defense is facing? Well, I think they're the, some of the eye candy, you know, some of the eye candy, and they got they got good schemes, they got good players. That tight ends, uh, that guy can make some plays, you know, and the quarterback. You know, the schemes, their stuff is they they keep cause you problems. Thanks, coach. That's it. That's it. It's about the eye candy, Jason. Did he just say that's my best side when he was sidling up next to you? Yes, he did. That's outstanding. We're having fun. I don't know about you on Christmas Eve. We're having a great old time. 31-24 at halftime. After the break, Rick and Gruev have all the highlights from around the country. It's the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Some previews. The New Year's Six coming your way next. You're watching the SoFi Hawaii Bowl, and in the interest of equal time, we mixed in a couple defensive highlights there. On the way back from the break, it is 31-24 Hawaii with the lead as we take a look at tonight's holiday highlights brought to you by Macy's. You want touchdowns? Rod's got touchdowns oh, for you. Oh, if you weren't here, sorry, and if you were, check it out. Seven, seven touchdowns in the first half. Three touchdown passes by Cole McDonald, four touchdowns on the ground. BYU getting into the act with Katoa, and then a couple quarterback sneaks on both sides. Seven first half touchdowns by these two teams. And in the words of song, it doesn't show signs of stopping. 31-24 as we take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Serve Pro. McDonald has been dazzling, smart with two touchdowns. Wilson for BYU as a rushing touchdown. Check out the Serve Pro First Responder Bowl, by the way, December 30th on ESPN. Western Kentucky and Central Michigan are Serve Pro First Half stats. Okay, Rod, you play defense. How do you stop these offenses? Well, at least in terms of this run and shoot, I, I've been challenging BYU to be more aggressive defensively, you know, to, to really get their hands on the slot receivers and not let them have free releases. We'll see if that happens. They're not uh, a blitzing team defensively. I don't think that's the answer for BYU. So we'll see what they do. Now for Hawaii, on the other hand, Wilson has been extending plays and really causing them problems. Can they keep him in the pocket and can they affect him? Can they get to him? Hawaii needs to bring pressure. That is more their identity. Quint downstairs, what do you have? Well, I asked Kalani Sataki, how can you better defend the seam? And he looked at me and he said, you'll see, it's all in there. We need to start pressuring the quarterback. So he really wouldn't tell me how they're gonna better defend the team. Uh, meanwhile, if you're this team, this Hawaii team right here, their defensive coordinator said they have to do a better job against Bushman, the tight end. And that means getting a bigger body against him. Yeah, good He's luck with that. He's been pushing off and making plays. He's like a bear roaming free in the forest at points of this game. Bushman is, as Wilson's on the outside. And Bushman blocking for him. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's a good example, Q. I mean, yeah. he, he's on the edge. He gives them the edge. He contains the outside edge guy there. And then you that allows Wilson or, to come around and pick up almost a first down. Another, he does pick up first down. Look at this. Yeah, and, He's blocking in space. It's 6'5", 245, okay? If he lines up as an attached tight end, as he is right now on the left, you can cover him with a linebacker. But when he's split out and you have a safety on him, he's got a physical matchup advantage. Engage blocking again as Katoa crashes down at the 49 for another BYU first down. Getting to the edge. This is what BYU did last year against Hawaii. They pull one of their interior linemen, get to the edge, knock out that contained guy, and pick up yardage. They did it for 280 yards last season. Christensen's got 100 pounds on Eugene Ford there on the edge. That was the, the blocking situation right there. As you see Christensen at 295 out of Bountiful, Utah. 
Dax Milne to the short side. And he made his way on the tightrope inside the 45. It's one of these things. You go back and you pull out the film from last year and you go, hey, we did this well, we did that well. What, what's our game plan this week? Well, we're going to change and do this. Well, wait a minute. Why don't we do what we did until they prove that they can stop that? Uh, it's coaches overthinking, and it happens every week in college football, right? They know what you did, so you're going to do something different, and you can outthink them that way. Just go beat them the way you beat them, right? It is somewhat different personnel, but the success is still there as Wilson's going for the sideline and great coverage by Ford on the edge against Dax Milne to set up third down. Now, I'm not saying you don't change your game plan and you don't tweak things from game to game or year to year, but you have to challenge that other team and make them show you that they have solved the last problem. Good coverage as we talked about once before out there by Ford. Eugene Ford pressed into duty with Rochesterman Ferris out because of an off field issue. Their best cover corner not playing today. Wilson down the middle of bullet incomplete and sometimes those short throws the accuracy is not on target with the quick release from Wilson. Yeah he's got a lot of arm and remember you're talking about a guy who had a pin in his thumb and a cast and that touch and that feel for the short throw, I mean, those things might take a little longer to come back. You like the punt here? Well, Fourth down and four in a 55 total point game? Against an offense you haven't been able to stop? Yeah, I do. You do? You're, yeah. Your punt's safe here defensively. Treat this like it's going to be a fake. This is the first punt since the first drive of the game. And they will go ahead and boot it to JoJo Ward from Old Droid. You know, we still have a punting national crisis. You're saying the the importing of Australians has most overtaken college media. football. Most power five teams have Australian punters now. We, we can't produce punters in America now. Rod will take <laughs> us through the Sydney Opera House when we come back. <laughs> Coming in January, celebrating college football's 150 years. Rod, you were part of those panels and part of the pieces that ESPN put together. What are people going to see? Uh, it's, it's such a great series. Greatest coaches, greatest players, greatest games, greatest Heisman debates. If you haven't been watching, get involved. Check it out. Baruta tipped it in the air, and it's incomplete. So second down. If you're just joining us, there are 55 points on the board. If you're with family members or you have family members around the world, remind them that they know how It's a Wonderful Life ends. They don't know how the SoFi Hawaii Bowl ends. So join in with us for the conclusion of what's been a really entertaining game so far. Good way to spend your Christmas Eve with family and friends and a high-scoring game in the background, huh? Doesn't hurt. It's Pac-12 after dark without the Pac-12 so far. McDonald Ooh, in the heavy wow. traffic. I mean, H1 traffic, and it's third down. Yeah, yeah, this, that, that's that's not the choice, Q. No, and you, you think about how good he's been so far this game, but this season, the inconsistency, the ugly decisions at times, and now with the worst field position of the game for Hawaii, he's got to take care of the ball. He got bailed out twice in the first half, a fumble and a potential interception uh, overturned by replay re review. Yeah, and, and on the other side of that, 300-plus yards passing, three touchdowns, 18 completions. So you're right. You got the good stuff, and now you get a little bit of the shaky stuff. They're top 20 in third-down conversion in the country, Hawaii, and McDonald oh. threw it right to Fanua. Yes, he did. Goodness gracious. Yes, he did. He couldn't have walked up and handed it to him any easier, and Fanua just couldn't hang on to it. And there were nothing but blue shirts in the middle of the field there. Take a look at this. Look at that. Three blue shirts trying to squeeze it into uh, Ward, number nine. And I, I don't know how he saw Ward. There's nothing but blue around there. It was a predetermined throw, I believe. Do you think so? Yeah, I'm standing right behind him, and that's where he locked up. Just the second punt for Hawaii. They have the seventh fewest punts in the FBS. Hefo to the fringe. Aleva Hefo has room to go. And he's inside the five. 
There is a marker down on the play. We'll check the flag. Such a good classic return. Make one guy miss and then get to the wall. Your wall of blockers that traps the punting team inside the playing field. Sideline warning, BYU. This is their first warning. There is no yardage enforcement with their warning. First and goal, BYU. So that's all it is, the sideline warning. The get back coach going to get fined. Yeah, you, you get this punt, and as a returner, your job, make one guy miss, get to that wall. Now watch here. He gets a block. He's over to the wall. Now all the Hawaii players are inside the wall, and they can't get to you. Aliva spoke to us earlier this year about how much he enjoys returning punts, and I think he realizes that's going to be a critical aspect that determines his trajectory potentially in the NFL. He's got to be a great special teams player. That was a great play, Q. We've seen him take jet sweeps. We've seen him return punts. He can throw the ball as well. He set up a first and goal for BYU. Wilson on the roll. He wants to duck his head, and he gets hit at the two. This is typical BYU down here. Get to the edge, pull one of your linemen, little gap scheme. Clark Barrington, 56, the left guard, pulls out, gets in front of Wilson. Pull everybody to the right side, pull around your guard, let him get out there and lead you. You saw 56 Barrington. Now, second and short. Wilson again is in. Touchdown, BYU. His dad was born here. He's got roots in Hawaii, and Zach Wilson has a couple of rushing touchdowns. And one point away from the tie. Yeah, you think about this rivalry, and Wilson gives you all sides of it. A guy in high school who committed to Boise State, rooted for Utah, hated BYU, got a late offer from BYU, and now he's their star quarterback. He was more than happy to change hats. His parents have talked about how weird it is to root for BYU, but they are well behind the baby face quarterback, Wilson, who's deadlocked the game. SoFi Hawaii Bowl, brought to you by SoFi. Save, spend, earn, borrow, and invest all in one app. The Hawaiian Islands, GoHawaii.com. And Domino's, order online and track your order. Before you fly away from Honolulu, you've got to take in a luau. This one at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel at Waikiki Beach. The team's got a chance to uh, take in some traditional dancing, a Maori warrior demonstration, and a fire dance as well. Quint got to his own luau earlier this week, didn't you, Q? This, this is, is an island with great musicians. Uh, there, there's a wonderful musical community here. Are you one of them? Are you thinking of taking no, out the ukulele? No, I don't play the ukulele or the okay. guitar. I put some great singers here. By the end of this game, you might have the chance to. This is a high scorer, and it doesn't show many signs of slowing down as the return gets Hawaii just short of the 30-yard line. I, I pay close attention to Cole McDonald this series. You know, he started off so hot in that first half, has struggled that last series, seemed to be locking in, as Q said, not, not feeling and reading, but predetermining things. And remember, Hawaii talked to us about occasionally having to change the pace if they needed to with the backup quarterback. Yeah, yeah. And you could argue he's playing for his job right here in this game, Quinn. Well, did BYU change something defensively that confused him, uh, that he sees a different picture now in the second half? Well, Kalani Sitake said we'd see defending the seam differently. And he's undercut that time by Fanua, who nearly had the pick on the last drive. Yeah, they have changed up defensively, Q. They're doing a better job of getting a body on slot receivers. They're making sure they hit receivers as they come off the line of scrimmage, which is disrupting the timing a little bit, which is something we talked about and we expected 
the adjustment from BYU. You see the defenders in the face of the receivers now. They were up at the line. Long ball, McDonald down the sideline and too much on it. Yeah, and that, that's been the adjustment so far, is to make sure you crowd the receivers, you get your hands on them, you disrupt the timing. Now the adjustment for Hawaii, you see, if they're, if they're gonna do that on the edge, that's man coverage. And that receiver has to beat it. He has to get deep and beat that press coverage on the outside. Jason and Cedric Bird, their leading receiver with 95 receptions, does not have a helmet on the sideline. Looks like the back spasms may have ended his evening. He came in with a back injury, played in the first half, was fairly quiet as McDonald hit Sharks, little step back, trying to gain ground after that, and the cavalry continues to come to set up a fourth down. Yeah, so, so this adjustment by BYU has unsettled McDonald and the offense. Now, the chess game will continue. We'll see how they adjust it. Do they start moving their receivers? Do they start trying to get a better release, or do they start thinking we need to come with Cordero and see if maybe we can mix up the quarterback thing with more quarterback run game? And talking to the coaches, as you mentioned, it's not necessarily even about McDonald's success. It's simply the timber of the offense, the feel of the offense. And so he might lose his ability to play quarterback in this game just because of ineffectiveness of the whole unit. Can you take a guy out who's thrown for more than 300 yards? Eleva Hefo, by the way, we'll find out the answer to that. Hefo tiptoeing down the sideline with a gymnastic return just short of midfield. It's a 31-yard take back. Nice show. What a what a return by Hefo. Second big return by him. And again, he's trying to get to the wall. A little hesitation step. He makes a guy miss. He makes three guys miss. Juice. Nice. Yeah, juice play for their bench and their fans and look for BYU to be aggressive now with good field position. You wouldn't accuse Hawaii there of good special teams tackling in that scenario. Hifo with a strong return. A couple of punt returns to set up BYU. Fake the jet sweep. Wilson to throw. Bushman never got a chance to reel it in. Neat design. Yeah, he just missed him. Bushman was there. And Bushman's really put on a show tonight. I mean, you think about the skill set you'd like to have in a tight end, a guy who can block at the point of attack, a guy who can block and get you to the edge, a guy who can get down the field. He's done that. A guy who can get key first down, uh, short catches for you. He's done that too. Nothing better in the holiday season than a well-timed NFL draft promo on your screen, by the way. Bushman, you'll see maybe his name get called there, depending on what his future holds. As Katoa to midfield sets up a third down for BYU. Well, Bushman said he would make a decision about the NFL after this game is done. And as you mentioned earlier, he's got good people around him advising him. And Chad Lewis, his father-in-law, one of the great tight ends. Freshman All-American a couple of years ago in 2017. Bushman on a key third and seven here for Wilson. He spins it out wide and incomplete for the win for Dax Milne. And it's fourth down BYU. I, I would have been looking for Bushman coming across the field. Bigger target. That's a hard throw. Tough decision there for Wilson back across the field. Long throw, a little bit of pressure for a smaller receiver. There's a little pressure coming from Laulu for Hawaii as Oldroyd gets some run here. We didn't see much of the punters in the first half. They've been more present here in the second half. And a fair catch for JoJo Ward for Hawaii. Now, Quint was telling us that this increase in Australian punters is what you say Q something like mail order brides or yeah, it's something? like a mail order bride when, when, when these coaches go down to uh, down under and get in front of pro kick they, they kind of bring them out and say okay what time you do, what kind do you want you want a pocket punter a rugby punter you want a tall one a lefty a righty do you want one 
who's serious about education, you want one who's 26 or 19, then they find you a match. And they've, how many matches now? Are we like above 40 or yeah, into the they're, 50s? They're at least 47, 47. Australian kickers. Yeah. It's their, their best import from Australia right now, you, our punters. You, you're looking for a match here. Hawaii's looking for a, a match at quarterback. Shevin Cordero has come in, the freshman from the St. Louis School. He was the backup of Tua in high school as Reed goes down to set up second down. So look, uh, Hawaii, as we, as we foretold, when there's a bog down in the offense, they go to the other quarterback. But how does it feel when you take out a quarterback who's thrown for more than 300 yards and been responsible for four touchdowns and a half. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what you say to him other than this is your lot in life. Uh, that's what McDonald's dealt with. He waited two years to get the starting job, so. It, the quarterback position has evolved. A decade ago, no one would ever take out a quarterback under this, these circumstances. Now they're kind of treated like any other position. Really? And that's why you see the transfer portal yes. numbers rise. We saw a game this year that they subbed the quarterback every play. Whoa. Cordero swung back into the end zone by Mahe. Mahe with a terrific pressure there. He was in the backfield right at the snap. He blew this place, the play up at the very beginning, getting quickly by his blocker and making a play. That was quite a play. That was Laval 72 that couldn't, couldn't handle it. Onto Nysa Mahe, who was injured through all of last year after coming back from his mission trip in his native Tonga for a couple of years. Sets up a third down and 19 for Shevin Cordero in his first series in this bowl game for Hawaii, and that ball comes out low and incomplete. Hawaii's got an energy problem right now. Yeah. You feel it down there? Oh, yeah. Both the fans, the team. No emotion, they're flat. All of a sudden they're playing tight, looking up at the scoreboard. Kind of like they went into halftime and had a big meal and they're nappy right now. <laughs> nappy? Feeling feeling like a little shut-eye? Need a little sleep. And this is danger territory here because Hefo is on fire yes. as a punt returner. Q, two big punt returns in a row for Hefo. How about a directional kick? How about getting the ball out without it being blocked? By the numbers. Ben Scruton is on to punt instead of Gaudian. So we'll see if he can kick away from Hefo, and that is not going to get the job done. So Hefo forces the kick to the sideline off the side of his foot. It had to have been, and just a 30-yard punt. It's like a good base stealer intimidating a pitcher. Draws the attention, causes major ruckus, and BYU's got great field position when we're back. My goal was never to be the quarterback of an NFL team. I wanted to be the quarterback of a, a top 10 team playing in the national title game, and we have a chance to do that, and this is a dream come true for me. CFP All Access. Coming up here before the college football playoff, here from the coaches, here from that guy, Joe Burrow, his Heisman speech was just fantastic. Absolutely, biggest issue of the year, quarterback transfers. Joe Burrow ends up at LSU. Some folks thought he couldn't play, he found a spot for himself and will always appreciate Ed Ogeron just, for that. Just think what we would have missed out on had we not had quarterback transfers for this year. Yeah, I, people that are the best players finding a spot, no matter how they find a spot. Justin Fields, be, yeah. Justin Fields at Ohio State. I mean, Hurts Eason, at Oklahoma. Brom. I mean, it's all that carousel determined who was going to be starting quarterbacks in certain places, including Georgia. Here's a throw for Wilson to the outside and Talon Shumway for the first down for BYU, although very close, they will move the stick. You just, you have to love the story with Joe Burrow and what he did for LSU and how that community embraced him, how he just embraced that community. And his native Ohio. Yeah. Uh, in his acceptance speech oh. in the Heisman, trying to draw fantastic. money there. Yep, fantastic. A, a remarkable young man. And so many of them playing college football, getting a voice and getting an opportunity with open spots and the ability to transfer. Aleva Hifo with a sharp cut. 
I mean, he turned on a dime right there. That was an Indy car yeah, looking and, thing. And BYU can continue to do this. They have an advantage at the edge. They are bigger with their line and at the tackle and tight end spot. They spread you out. They pull a guard. They get you. And they did that to Hawaii last year over and over for almost 300 yards. And there's no reason for Grimes, the OC, to go away from it. Hawaii hasn't proven they can stop it. Magnum PI has all the answers here in Hawaii. Wilson on the run. He's got a convoy. Wilson picking his spot, and he gets decked inside the 10. I, his vision as a quarterback runner is strong. Well, his vision had two 300 pounders that are about six foot seven out in front of him for five, eight yards with nobody. Look at that. There is nothing but linemen in front of him. His own linemen. Wow. Yeah, that's a good sight to see. You're the starting quarterback. Nearly 50 yards on the ground for Wilson. He's got a couple of touchdowns with his legs. Action for Hefo. It's Katoa on the ground. And second down and goal coming up is Michael Washington. As they get thinner in the defensive backfield, makes the stop. You get the sense by looking at the Hawaii defense that they're getting a little bit worn out. I mean, everything is to the perimeter. Those big defensive linemen are chasing to the edge and then getting knocked around. Come back to the middle of the field, chase to the edge, get knocked around. A little winded. And make no mistake, Kalani Sitake was a fullback for BYU. Even though they are full of quarterbacks who went on to great things, they like to grind you. Katoa can't turn it upfield, and he's knocked down by Manley Williams, the well-named senior from here in Honolulu. A good numbers by Hawaii bringing pressure and getting into the backfield. You see Katoa yeah. limping off. Katoa limps off. Big play call here for Jeff Grimes. Field goals aren't going to win this game. Q, Q, do you think this is two plays for them? Not from the five. All right. You could argue, especially with the way Hawaii's played offense. Fine. You yeah. You don't get it, you leave them back there. We'll see. Third down. Wilson. Oh, high in the air. He got drilled. The ball comes loose. And it's going to be Hawaii football. He was soaring to the goal line. Everyone reacted. And Eugene Ford absolutely doused him. Ruling on the field as the ball was loose prior to being penetrating the goal line. It results in a touchback. First down, Hawaii. Hawaii football. That reminds you of Ortez Jenkins from Arizona a couple of decades ago. A helicopter hit. Now watch Ford line this up. He knows he's the guy there. Watch him get in there. There's a low hit and the high hit, and the ball comes out. And Ford was a guy not expected to start, but look at him. He yep. sees that perfectly because he sees the tackle below by his teammate Dalton. He knows he needs to go high, and he gets the ball out. The BYU team looking up at the video Throwing board. On the field of touchback on the previous play has been, under review. Has been celebrating because they believe that Zach Wilson crossed the plane before the ball was dislodged. So as the official, Mr. O'Day, was making the call, they actually ignored him and started celebrating because they're up looking at the video screen. The question is, Quint, will there be a definitive look down the goal line, right down the pipe? Because off this top view, it's very difficult to overturn. I mean, he drops the ball onto the shoulder, and you see where the shoulder is, but you can't call that definitive. You need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. That is a view that is also not down the line. And we've seen it. When you go to replay seminars and you watch the officials, they have plays like this quite often, and you see exactly what the false belief you get from a shot not After down the line the play, is. The ruling on the field of fumble recovered by the defense resulting in touchback. Stands as called. First down Hawaii. Yeah. Stanza's call. Stanza's call. And that's that's the rationale. There's no definitive view to show you the ball breaking the plane. You can guess, you can imagine, 
but the rule does not allow you to guess or imagine. You need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. Yeah, and, and we can argue, and BYU fans can argue at home all, all they want, and, and rightfully so, maybe, but there's not evidence to overturn. Right. So it's the right call by a replay booth. And so Cole McDonald's going to come back onto the field for Hawaii after an ineffective Shevin Cordero. A another red zone failure by BYU. That has been a struggle at points this season. The Cougars just 51% touchdown rate in the red zone this year. McDonald, after cooling his Jets, nearly threw a pick to Benua again. Yeah, yeah he, he hasn't recognized that things have changed inside the hash. Now, BYU is lining up over the slot receivers, and anybody who comes into the hash, they are getting a hand on them and slowing them down. So the middle of the field is not as wide open and clear as it was in the first half. That, that was Bird, who's back in the game, six and white in the right slot. You going vertical outside then? You have to. McDonald rolling. Eyes up field, and he slides as he saw Fanua coming for him. That's going to be basically no gain, third and long. So, so the routes that are now available on the outside, the go route, the out route, the comeback route by your receiver, because he's getting press coverage with inside technique. So. McDonald has to think in terms of getting the ball outside, getting it to his fleet receivers outside, and those receivers have to win that one-on-one -on -one battle outside. Saw so Kafusi trying to get the crowd riled up for BYU. McDonald scanning, and he throws. It looked like it came out. It did. It's incomplete. Jared Smart, the intended target. Heron was right on his back. And it's going to be fourth down. Those are dangerous throws. Those windows are so tight. BYU has packed it in inside the hash. Look at this. Look at all those blue shirts. It's getting tougher and tougher to throw inside. That's the fourth three and out this half for Hawaii, which has thrown for six yards in the third quarter after 331 in the first half. Second punter in Ben Scruton. Aleve Hifo back to return. Hifo turns it upfield, finds a seam again, keeps his feet, and finally trucks ahead to the 43-yard line. You want a game changer, it's Ben Aleve Hifo here in the second half. Yeah, I mean, he's been the one tossing the intimidation, you know, at Hawaii with his punt returns. It's such an interesting rivalry. BYU leading 23 to 8 all time. But Aleva Hifo has been through a couple of them as a senior now. Yeah, he, he's a guy that has a great first step, great vision, and he knows when to turn it on. We've seen that in his returns. He's gotten a little bit of help getting to the wall that BYU has set up for him. He's had three nice returns, 52. 31 and that last one for 14 it's turned you into a bingo caller it works for me yeah I, it, it's a good look <laughs> especially with the Hawaiian shirts nice the Aloha shirt Zach Wilson down the middle got his big man Bushman sliding down to the 41 now look we've talked about this rivalry and Nick Rolovich mentioned how important that game was in 2001 June Jones mentioned it as well Rolovich's final game as they're going to go tempo now Talon Shumway across the 40 yard line but you sense that there is something a little bit more that tingles the spirit between these two teams. Yeah and you know a lot of it is kind of mixed there was the the, the love for BYU and all that they've done over the years here. There's Lavelle Edwards and opening up football for the Polynesian community. And then there was Hawaii being left out of the Mountain West Conference yep. when BYU moved there. And we're not as good as you. All of that, all those things are, are kind of put together in this stew of this rivalry. They will run it. And Algier inside the 25. It's a first down. BYU and even if BYU doesn't feel what you were saying Nick Rolovich mentioned that exact thing to us that sometimes they felt like they were BYU's stepchild well yeah in the rivalry yeah well and you heard June Jones mention it as you see the great blocks there for Algier June Jones talked about that 2000 
and one game and how they felt that a 12 and 0 BYU team uh, disrespected them, overlooked them, was more focused on trying to play in the biggest bowl game and came here to the island and uh, Hawaii hung 72 on them. They got Rock Rolovich through eight touchdowns. Algier pinballing through the second level for a first down and goal. And Bushman, 89, finishing his block 10 yards down the field. Again, BYU, that offensive line, particularly on the edge, 6'6", 300 at the left tackle, 6'6", 310 at the left guard, 6'8", at the right tackle, 6'7", at the right guard. The length and height stand out from field level, Rod, and they're winning those one-on-one -on -one battles. A lot of missed tackles on this drive for the Rainbows. And the guy they're trying to tackle is a former linebacker, by the way, who has 24 tackles on defense this year, Tyler Algier. Second and goal, BYU. Yeah, this, this, this is a challenge. Now, remember the last time BYU was down here, Wilson fumbled going into the end zone. Hawaii was really aggressive, bringing pressure a couple times to force a third down play. Let's see if they bring the pressure again here. BYU brings in Emmanuel Asupa, who's been dealing with a foot injury the last couple of weeks before the bowl. And they'll run it with him. He gets undercut and chopped down at the four. Tremendous effort off the corner for Hawaii. That's Samuela Akoteyu, the senior from California. The 31-31, end of the third. We are gonna have a marvelous finish in the shadow of the beach. Wilson and BYU, McDonald and Hawaii, level after three. BYU coming back. There's the infinity pool at the Sheridan Waikiki, the off-season home of Steve Turnberger, our on-site producer. We're tied at 31 in paradise, and BYU rapping on the door not so gently. Aleva Hifo seeking the end zone. He's turned away, and it's fourth down. Corey Bethley ushered him to the paint. What are you doing here? Well, they did a great job stringing that out. Good job by Hawaii. Now, they will kick here, but... What, what, what would your guys say? I, well, I, uh, you're, you're talking about my analytics people. Your analytics coach, guys would saying. say, oh, come on, you got to go for it here. Not necessarily. I mean, with the way your defense has been playing, you could argue to kick the field goal, take the Look, lead. I but would, you have that kicking problem. Yeah, I, I, I kick because my kicker is getting his confidence back. He just made one. Let him make another one. And you've got some control over Hawaii's offense at the moment right now. Short angle from 20. And he's got it. Old Droid sinks it. And BYU retakes the lead early fourth quarter. Let's take a look at our SoFi by the numbers in this game. And the old slot machine was really paying off in the first half. But uh, in the second half, not as much, although we still are over 700 total yards. Well, give BYU credit defensively for the adjustment they made to be more aggressive and to protect the middle of the field. They started beating up the receivers for Hawaii, not allowing them to run free, and it's paid dividends. They've been able to handle the run and shoot in the second half, and it's allowed their rushing attack to take charge of this game. Their offensive line has asserted their dominance along with their size and BYU is in control at the moment. You want in control, third quarter total yards, 128 to negative four. Ouch. That'll get the job done if you're BYU, which has won 11 of the last 12 meetings in this rivalry, and the first time they've met in a bowl game, this is on Hawaii's home field, even though the Rainbow Warriors are actually the designated road team, they couldn't even dress in their own locker room. That's gotta make you mad. Crazy. You can't be happy about that. Yeah. No, you got all your stuff in there, and then you have to move. But such is life in the bowl season, and we're glad to have you along for what's been an entertaining first three quarters. No touchback. Instead, Panoke, the young wide receiver, ends up getting to about the 20-yard line. 
a bowl mania rolls on Thursday. Two more entertaining ball games for Eastern. Skip Holtz and Louisiana Tech have their own basic home game in Shreveport against Miami and Manny Diaz. Then Pat Narduzzi and that Pittsburgh defense, which is so talented, will take on Mike Glass and the guys from Ypsilanti, Eastern Michigan, into bowl season in the Quick Lane Bowl at Ford Field in Detroit. 72 and sunny at that game, by the way, at Ford Field. Not a bad time of the year, huh? Great. No, tremendous. I, you can learn so much about college football teams that you may not be well acquainted with. And that's one of the best parts of early bowl season. You, you get some of these matchups, teams that have not seen each other, they feel each other out. And then you have the other end of the spectrum, these two teams that are basically the, the Hatfields and the McCoy. Exactly. And, you know, and, and they're just fun. A lot of these games are just fun. This is a fairly intense rivalry going back a long way, but it's also a really fun game. Bowl season brings great history as well. You saw Kakusi make that last tackle. He was here at, a, at about age one at the Hula Bowl. He traveled to the Hula Bowl to watch the Hula Bowl, and in a cool circle of life moment, his son Foster is now here with him as dad plays in the 2019 SoFi Hawaii Bowl. Deep shot, sideline, on the money once again. McDonald to JoJo Ward. And that's the answer. That's the answer, Jason, we've been talking about. When that middle of the field gets crowded and then BYU plays you, man, on the outside. Outside, defense number 55. That penalty is declined. The play results in a first down. You have to beat that man coverage. And that's exactly what Ward did. You get the good pass pro. Ward beats the single coverage from Gualaku, and there's your big play. They caught him off guard by going tempo, and then they had the free play. Be interesting, now with such a light box, does Hawaii actually show some restraint and run the ball more here? It is Reed. He was sized up beautifully. Yeah, Q. Defenses. Light box, but what they're doing defensively is they are playing for the pass, and then once they see run, really attack to to add to the box in a hurry. You mentioned Kafusi being a, a new dad with an eight, eight month old. Getting to watch dad play here as this ends up sailing to the uh, end zone incomplete. Did you see that his wife, he met when they were 12 and they dated for eight years? and recently got married. It's an awesome story. That's unbelievable. The, the, the BYU student athletes that we've had the great fortune of meeting in our time over the last couple of years, Rod, I, I'm blown away by all of them. They are such impressive young men. They are. And, and balancing an awful lot on their plates, whether it be family, academics, football, their missions. Uh, they're, they're just intensely Cute. interesting young men. Cute. Best assets of the university that, that should be put out there more. Yeah, tremendous to talk to as Reed's turned away. You got a guy in the secondary in Gowalaku who escaped civil unrest in Liberia. So many guys with amazing stories. Fourth down here, you can kick for the tie or go for it. What are you doing? You're kicking for the tie. Okay. I mean, c considering the way your offense is, has played and struggled, and now you got a chance to get points. Take the points, tie it up, keep the game going. You always think I'm going to say go for it, but I agree with you in this oh, case. Well. You you came out of the shoot a little aggressive. You well, were running the I'm run just, and shoot here. I'm used to your You're telling right. me to go for it. Uh, <laughs> suggesting, <laughs> hypothetically. Mescal for the tie. Does it have enough? It is no good. BYU is amped on the sideline. Time out on the field for the media. Mescal didn't hit it square. BYU keeps the lead. You're watching the SoFi Hawaii Bowl. We encourage you to make it out here at some point for this bowl game. Great hospitality, wonderful people. As many tiki torches as you'd like, clearly from that shot. And wonderful starry nights on the islands. Here at Aloha Stadium, BYU has retaken 
34-31 the advantage and this is incomplete down the sideline for Talon Shumway second down for BYU. It's hard to be in a bad mood when you're sitting on a park bench at the beach looking at the ocean, right? It, yeah, I mean, I didn't catch us. The, hey, <laughs> we're, we're, we're the cranky crew now, is that what you're saying? Find yourself a lanai, go take a nap, and uh, call it a day. It is an incredible place. Algier carving the defense, galloping through without a shoe, and a first down. Who needs a shoe when Matt Bushman can lead you through a hole? Come on with that. Just get behind your big tight end, number 89. Get a good block on the left side, nice double team, and look at that, follow 89 Bushman. Run through two would-be tackles, you don't need your shoe. I mean, somebody's got to get him a shoe for Christmas now. I mean, we know what the gift's going to be. They're going to work on him quickly as McChesney's come in. Get that man into his shoe. And this offensive line has taken over. Oh, my goodness. Wilson to the sideline. If that was McChesney, he was going to go a long way. But watch this. I, this is a Christmas Eve miracle. The shoe pops off and actually gained just about as much yardage as Algier. Yeah, you go in to make a tackle and you go, all I got was shoe, and he kept going. Wow, heck of a run. He actually got kicked by his own shoe, which has got to be the first time in college football history that's happened. A man's own shoe has kicked him. Oh, McChesney moved, that's a false start. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Full start, offense number 27, five-yard penalty, second down. And here comes Algier, the footwear people have taken care of him. And by the way, that's the first penalty against BYU tonight. Hey, Jackson, don't do that, is the word. Hey, Tyler, get your shoe on. <laughs> Paraphrasing. A lot of movement at the line for Hawaii. Algier picked door number one. That was closed. Door number two, not so hot either. A lot of white shirts there. No doors open. This will bring up a third down in Zach Wilson time. The, the guy who grew up hating BYU because he was a Utah fan. His dad played at Utah. They had season tickets. I get it. At the 50 yard line in the second row. I get it. I and mean, that's a big Utah fan. Yeah, and now he is the BYU man. He is, by most BYU folks, considered the next great quarterback. And your next great quarterback make plays in situations like this. John Beck, his mentor, the great BYU quarterback. Wilson sideline, a lot of contact. Here comes the marker. It was incomplete, but Cortez Davis got into Shumway, and the flag is in. Now, Wilson did his job. That, that's the play. He gave Shumway a chance. He recognized the single coverage and gave him a chance. Pass interference. Defense number 18. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. It's a catchable. Yep. Nice ball he threw there, yep. Rod. Yeah, catchable ball. He recognized single coverage and he threw it up to the outside to give Shumway a chance, and you see the hand-to-hand -hand battle got out of hand for Davis, and he started grabbing Shumway. No choice but to throw a flag there. Yeah, there was a little contact from Shumway at the back end, but clearly the initiation was Davis. Once you extend those arms on a grab, you're gonna get flat. It's just easier to see for the officials well, too, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Just five penalties. It took till late second quarter to have our first penalty of the game. Free runner, Wilson saw it come and still chuck for Simon, it's incomplete. Micah Simon down the sideline against Davis again. Yeah. The, the pressure coming from Buasau. Well, slightly underthrown, good play by Davis, but Wilson hangs in there to take a shot. And that ball's a little underthrown. No pass interference, mutual hand-to-hand -hand combat there. You see the toughness of Wilson. Stood in there pretty good. See, he's proof that you can be a tough guy and watch 
Rom-coms, yeah, kick I mean, He's so baby-faced, yeah. but, but then you watch him play. He is a rugged individual as he seeks the 30, and he's not going to get much more. Wilson dropped for a loss by Donovan Dalton, and it's third down, under 10 to go. Yeah, Wilson is consumed by football. You know, he's been dealing with recovering from injuries, but he says his spare time is is spent focusing on football and trying to become the best quarterback that he can and his relaxation. Romance comments. And family dinners. Family dinners. Along came Polly. The guy you want to take home to mom. Yeah. He's in a big spot here in a bind on third down and 11. Look at Washington, the freshman communicating, jumping up and down. They go empty for Wilson who runs. Wilson zagging outside and he gets to the 25 to make it a doable field goal. How about the stiff arm by him at the end of that? You know, he looks uh, like he's made of porcelain in terms of just his face, but he is absolutely uh, a, a little baby-faced assassin here. Watch yeah. the end of this. Cue the stiff arm. His feet are tremendous when he runs and the way he can turn corners, but the stiff arm is a little nastiness yeah. with that baby face look. We really enjoyed talking to Zach Wilson. He is a future star here at BYU. From 41 yards for Oldroyd. It is up, and Oldroyd is no good. Oldroyd thought he hit it. He can't believe it. He still thinks it was good. Time out on the field for media. It went in. It went in. It went in. They're saying, you hear on the field, it went in. One of the BYU players was saying it went in to Tim O'Day. Let's watch again. I, that's very close. It looked like it wrapped around. Now, if it's over the goalposts, it's not reviewable. Correct. And remember, you've got an official standing right underneath that looking up. If it's within the range of the vertical goalposts, you can review it. If it's not, you can't. So 34-31, Hawaii ball when we come back. Sports Center on Christmas Eve. Bucci and Zubin have it for you. Reports from the college football semifinals in the playoff and then our sit down with Giannis plus unique sneakers the NBA players wear on Christmas Day tomorrow Sports Center is next right here on ESPN and the ESPN app you can ask Bucci and Zubin for something for Christmas if you care to maybe they'll respond McDonald down the left sideline incomplete he had too much on it that vertical route was the aim for Sharks second down yeah they've, they've made the adjustment they've missed the a little bit on that cue. I don't know if the wind had anything to do with that. We feel it picking up here. It may have just a tad. It's at his back right now. Now look, you mentioned it. Our analytics group sent us pretty stark numbers about McDonald inside the hash mark and outside the hash mark on deep balls. His completion percentage dropped about 15 percent outside the hash mark this year. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, I was surprised. BYU wasn't pushing him to outside throws. Sharks really helped him there and got waylaid for it by Bo Tanner. Quinn, you saw that from an interesting angle. Yeah, it looked like he was going to catch that one under the chin as a pretty violent tackle. Sharks is a homemade product, though. The detail oriented, he's maximized his ability. He grew up about 10 miles from here in Honolulu, and he's become kind of a go to guy in some tough catches over the middle this year. Three receivers with more than 80 catches this season. He had 300 yards in a high school game once as Smart is dropped right at the line to gain at the 34. It's a first down for Jared Smart. Jazz IU got him, but a little late. A rare first down in the second half. And a rare catch for Smart in this half, too. He was enormous in the first half. This is his first catch of the second half. McDonald's been great on third down so yeah. far tonight. Well, will they bring back a little bit of a quarterback run game? Empty formation. This is here. the box. Look how light this box is, yep. Rod. Quarterback run They're game. They're inviting run. Bird 
Tangled up at the 40 yard line and yanked down by Warner the senior. Quint that empty formation BYU struggled with last year in this game and part of what Hawaii did was run the quarterback draw against that light box. We've not seen that yet tonight but that is something that that they should be able to employ when they go empty. It's there if you want it. Well, here's All a, you'd have to do is yep. double team Tonga inside and then follow the other guard out. Here's another empty formation for that possibility. That's a big dude 95 in the middle. Quint's talking about the middle guy of three on that defensive line. McDonald quick hitter. Sharsh got off the line well and he's got a first down across the 45. So they're rushing three and they're dropping eight and those linebackers that Quinn is talking about in the box near the line of scrimmage they're at about five yards depth and on the snap they're taking a step back thinking defend the pass so you have an opportunity to run once they recognize run they come flying up empty set again screen off the bubble and smart is torpedoed after uh, medium gain Chaz Ayu got into his body look death by a thousand paper cuts is fine by Hawaii here sure. as long as they get in well if it's helping confidence if it's helping McDonald's confidence to complete some short passes great it's a great thing it's a good thing a guy had a torridly hot first half and then cooled off in the third quarter transplant from California to here in Hawaii just like his coach Nick Rolovich who spent a couple years at junior college before making his home as the Hawaii quarterback McDonald on the run he was hit from behind by Mahe and then head on later by Daw who tried to wrestle the ball from him earlier and now it's third down you know the, the one disappointment I would say for Hawaii tonight is, is and because Bird has been banged up and we've not been able to see his genius this season came in with 95 catches more than a thousand yards receiving and he's been hampered by the back spasms and the like. Otherwise, he's a guy that, that can dominate a game. One of three guys over 1,000 yards this year for Hawaii. McDonald goes through his checks, and Smart has a first down. The ball came loose. And they're going to say first down, call him down at the 38 as Kofensis got on it. He's saying that should be a fumble and a recovery, and the officials aren't having it. You see McDonald come all the way back to his Ooh. left to find Smart. Smart was on top of a body, and there was a clear recovery, but looks like replay is not going to stop play. Ah, uh, yeah, here it comes. Here's the whistle. That was close enough that, that they do have to stop it. The ruling on the field on the previous play of pass complete is under review. Now there are two questions. Is it complete and fumble? Is it incomplete as well? Those are the questions on field in game. But uh, we have terribly sad news to report from our ESPN family, our colleague, the tremendous reporter and writer, Ed Ashoff has passed away today on his 34th birthday. We are thinking of his family, his fiance, and everybody who loved him dearly. Uh, uh, truly wonderful member of our ESPN family Edward Ashoff dead today at the age of 34 just shocking and, and awful news one of our college football colleagues um, man tremendous person tremendous colleague tremendous writer and just so devastating and surprising so sad the SoFi Hawaii Bowl Brought to you by SoFi. Save, spend, earn, borrow, and invest all in one app. Marriott Hawaii, the best locations on all the best beaches and the best deals. Visit MarriottHawaii.com. And Lexus, experience amazing. The uh, tour of the USS Missouri, so thoughtfully done, so many important artifacts. Here in Hawaii and the players getting the tour of the Missouri ending World War II on September 2nd 1945 and uh, big review here let's After check reviewing and see. the play the ruling on the field of complete is being changed to incomplete pass the ball will be returned to the 46 yard line where it will be fourth and three clock off 
operator, please reset the game clock to five minutes, 44 seconds. 544, please. Two issues here. Number one, it, it, it's incomplete. Number two, fourth down coming up. Yeah, now, incomplete please. because Thank once you. he left the ground, he has to come back and complete the process. And the determination here was that he didn't have possession and control as he completed the process coming to the ground. And with capital A aggression and aggressive choices being Nick Rolovich's hallmark and cornerstone for Hawaii in the run and shoot, he's going to go for it. Well, he said yesterday one of the things that he got from his meetings with Mike Leach, be aggressive, be who you are. And be adventurous. Fourth down and three for Hawaii. McDonald over the middle, got the first down and then some. Cedric Bird healthy enough to hit it to the 25. It's a gain of 20 in a major spot. He's been a decoy most of the night because of the back spasms, but the quick slant. Watch him avoid the pressure and contact and a perfectly thrown ball by McDonald for a key first down. Moving down to five minutes. Charge and a whistle blows it dead. Flag coming down and a false start against Hawaii. Full start offense. All 11 players were never set for a second prior to the snap. Five yard penalty, first down. The one thing about Bird, if he's healthy enough, he's the one receiver who has the quickness to avoid the BYU defender who's trying to get his hands on him. And that might open up some short passes inside between the hashes where Hawaii has struggled in the second half. So Bird, if he's healthy enough, he could be a factor down the, down the, uh, down the road here. And at least free up some real estate for somebody else. Sharsh back in motion. This time he stays out of the backfield. McDonald, deep ball left side, back of the end zone, incomplete. Nick Mardner trying to high point it, and they go crashing into a sign. And Mardner is one of the few tall receivers that they have on the Hawaii roster, six foot five. And McDonald put it up to give him a chance. And he uses all six foot five to get up and get this thing, but he can't get one foot in bounds at the end here. Good play by Heron, number 11, to really press Mardner to the back of the end zone. Mardner, a red shirt last year out of Mississauga, Ontario, who went to the elite, the opening. McDonald incomplete. Sharsh defended closely by Kafusi, and it's third down. I remember Mouse Davis saying that small receivers can really excel in this run and shoot offense, body control, change of direction. But ideally, if you can get a six foot four, six foot three guy with that kind of body control, they will blow the offense open. Well, Nick Rolovich described Ashley Lalee, one yep. of his receivers who was great for the Broncos in the NFL, as physically dominant. Yep. And that's the type of thing that they don't have as much of without that. Yeah, you might be in two down territory here for Hawaii. Third and 15. Blindside pressure, and down he goes! J.J. Nwigwe, and McDonald never saw him, but he certainly felt him. How big is that? That is a three-man rush with five blocking, and you can't protect the quarterback. Manning, 75, gets locked up one-on-one -on -one with Nwigwe, and he can't hold him off. Now, you went from range of Meskel's long for the year, which is 50, and now out of his range. Yeah. And they're going to get a timeout. Charge timeout, Hawaii. See, the now, first of the and you burned the timeout. And right, exactly, that, that is... Quint. It's a great point, Quint. You've lost the yardage, you've lost the field goal chance, and now you have a clock stopper gone. This will also be immediate timeout. Timeout. Timeout on the field. Rough moment for Hawaii, took a sack, got out of field goal range, burned a timeout, Rod. You can't do that. I mean, if you're going to blow the timeout, 
you have to go for it now, don't you? I mean, that's just poor management. I mean, you're better off punting and taking the five-yard penalty and saving your timeout. The only problem with that is, yes, there's time that comes off the clock, but the timeout's more valuable than anything Absolutely. else here. Absolutely. I'm totally with you. And now you got a kick to Hefo, who has been squirrely to tackle in the second half. Think about how badly that series was. Three-man pass rush, you get sacked, you lose your, your field goal possibility, and you lose the timeout. You, that's compounding things. That can't, that's not good. And now they're going to take the delay. Delay a game. Kicking team. That penalty has been declined. Fourth down. And that's the point. Don't take the timeout. Take the delay. And you don't have this issue. Yeah, the, the only thing Nick Rolovich, I think, will say is, well, we wanted to save the time on the clock, but you had already let some time roll off and make the decision. Timeout is more valuable than losing those seconds off the clock there. At this moment, yes. yes. Totally. Hifo waves for the fair catch, and that's a good punt. To the six-yard line, that's where BYU will embark with just about four minutes to go in the 30-second meeting between these two schools. And for Kalani Sitake, who has a lot of family here from the North Shore, here on Oahu, from La Ie, and we asked him about growing up and, and what this place means to him and, and how this island shaped him and, and what he hearkened back to was Laie Park and going there and playing all sorts of games outside, being outdoors until the sun went down and then having to come home, capture the flag, kick the can, pick up football, whatever it is. This place means a great deal to the heart of that guy who wants to win badly with his team holding the ball, Wilson to the sideline, an incomplete second down. And how many family members do you have here, Coach? He couldn't even tell us. He says, I, I ran out of tickets. 20 or 30 family members before the game. I said, Coach, where's your family sitting? He said, I I'm too nervous. I, I don't even want to deal with that, that right now. I'm locked in. Yeah, listen, Huey. From day one, he told his team they had to win this game. It was an important game for them. And I think some of that was personal, and some of that was for the long-term development of the program for next season. Zatake getting a contract extension late this year. He and the offense will run it on second down. So third down coming up, and Hawaii can choose to hang on to the timeouts right now or start to use them, and it looks like they'll hang on. With uh, just under four minutes to go, wise decision since you're down a timeout. You want to get a stop here. You'll still have plenty of time, and... If this ball is punted, if they don't make the fourth down, you'll get good field position as well. You're leaning on your offensive line. They've done the job today. Q, it's, Can they win the victory-type drive right here? Q, they've won on the edge. Jet sweep, toss sweep, gap scheme, pull one of your linemen to get to the edge behind Bushman. That's worked for them. That was Hefo in the backfield. Wilson meandering across the 15 he's got a first down for the second time head over heels this time he clings to the football the speed and the athleticism he outran a spy and an Came additional defender defensive injury injured they've, player betley yeah they've got eyes on it they're expecting this now watch here comes the spy and he outruns the spy he's got that finishing aggressive instinct Zach Wilson's only a sophomore. Great feet, turns the corner. That's the second time today he's put his nose in traffic and paid the price. He's only a sophomore, 6'3", 200 pounds. By the time he's a senior, he'll be a lot closer to 220 pounds. There's Bethley, who's down. I mean, look, as we said earlier, we enjoyed our time with Zach Wilson. He's got a mean streak. He's got an outgoing personality. He's a family guy. He loves, adores football, and he's willing to go to the school to play college football that is the mortal enemy of the team he grew up loving. Uh, yeah, he's from around Provo, but they were Ute fans growing up. 36 grandchildren, a lot of grandchildren. Very competitive, and you see him in the Utes gear. I mean, yeah. That, and then Boise State, so he, he rifles through all the rivals of BYU <laughs> yeah. and then becomes a Cougar. Led him to wins over Tennessee and, and USC. 
a lot of hope He's, in Provo with, with him and, and this hey, Q, offensive line that comes back next Q, year. Do you remember how BYU went through that period where they struggled at the quarterback yeah. position? Yeah, so and, BYU like. Yeah, and, and everyone is sort of like, this is the guy. We've been waiting for him. He's the guy. And he's showing you all the characteristics of being the next great BYU quarterback. We told you earlier, he's heard from Steve Young. John Beck is one of his mentors. Jim McMahon has come through here. So many great BYU quarterbacks. Taysom Hill wasn't at that level here, but he's been great in the NFL. It's a question of his health. Can he stay healthy? Algier turned away. Derek Thomas snapped him up quickly, and Hawaii uses one of those two remaining timeouts. We, we talked about Wilson's shoulder injury, the thumb injury, timeout, the Hawaii. pins in the thumb, the calf. Clock operators, please reset and how the game clock to 2:26. That hurt his development some, but if he stays healthy and has the right kind of off season, he, he's going to be special. And right now, his challenge is to manage this game, manage the clock, get first downs, and end the game for BYU. He's part of our Keys to the Game. We'll update for you, brought to you by Dollar General. You wanted balance from BYU, and you got it. Yeah, 200 plus yards rushing, 200 plus yards passing. We said Zach Wilson had to have a big game. He gave them that, and how about Hawaii? We, we, we said they really needed a big, big passing game. McDonald had to redeem himself from last season's poor bowl game performance. And coming in as the worst team in the country taking care of the football, they had to do better. And they did. So that's why we had this close game. And they were motoring in the first half. Hawaii looked unstoppable. It was cold Brennan, and Timmy Chang all over again. BYU made the requisite adjustments. And now trying to put it away second and nine. They'll go reverse from Algier for Hifo, who has to break it down and slice back upfield. That's a nifty run by Hifo, who saw Matautia coming, and he dodged him. And now you start thinking about your timeouts, Hawaii. Charge timeout, Hawaii. Number three. Their third and final of the half. So you're talking about this play for the game, basically. Right. This will be a full timeout. That could have easily been a stop, and you saw the change of direction ability from Aleva Hifo. Not to belabor the point, yep. but if they hadn't wasted that timeout earlier, they'd still be sitting on one. It's 100% true, and it could be hugely important. Hifo does everything at full speed. Be interesting now on this third and short call, Raji. Do you run the perimeter? Do you use power? Or do you do some play action? We've seen him score earlier on in the year. And a, and a similar fourth and one to Bushman in play action yeah. to well, roll the dice that way. I, I think at this point, Q, the, the less ball handling, the better if you're BYU. And they've been great at really attacking the edge. And so attack the edge, see if you get the first down, keep the clock moving. If you don't get the first down, you're still going to burn a lot of clock with no timeouts left for Hawaii. This, this is why we love bowl season, and we have so much more coming up. Four more on Friday on ESPN and the ESPN app. Mac Brown's back in a bowl game against Temple. Dave Clawson's done a magnificent job for Wake Forest. Oklahoma State and Texas A&M, some big names down south, and then Cheese It Bowl Part 2. Will there be more than 17 points? Will a sports information director be called for a penalty? That and much more in the Cheese It Bowl Part 2 at 10.15 Eastern Time. And it's Mike Leach. And it's Mike Leach. If the cheese it Bowl wasn't enough, it pairs with Mike Leach. Here, third down and two for BYU. If you're Hawaii, you have to commit, and you have to be aware of the edge. You can't get out flanked. And we have a whistle before the snap and a timeout BYU, one of three remaining before first timeout, BYU. zeroes They're in the first play clock. Half. All right. So now, and, and we've seen this in the NFL, you take a timeout, you take a, a look. Timeout. Do you change what you're doing? What did Grimes look at from Hawaii's defense there? Well, th that was interesting because at one point, Mike Simon at the end lined up at, this, at the quarterback position under center. He's a wide receiver. Yes. For those not called, acquainted. Before they called the timeout. I, I can't believe that in this situation they would want to go under center for the first time in a game with someone who hasn't taken a snap all game. 
that said, the mental dexterity of this offensive staff, the playbook depth, who knows what they drum up. Yeah, they also have that scrum package where they'll bring in uh, Dion Gonwalek, who Tongo will play fullback. We haven't seen that today, but they've shown that in short yardage situations this season. Yeah. A lot of options. Uh, yeah, uh, my view simply is you've got the advantage. You're, you're sort of in control. You don't need to be too fancy. You know, do, do your best. You've got a big offensive line that has had a really good game. Go pick up the first down. Put yeah, it on them. Speed option. We've seen him run earlier this year yeah. with Jaron Hall. Go, go to the edge. You've had a lot of success getting to the edge with your big linemen and with your quarterback. Why not do it again? Under center. Wilson rolling. Incomplete. They got his feet moving intentionally. And Hawaii's going to get a chance here. Wow. But you stopped the clock. So many parts of that are but you. Dot, you, dot, dot. You stop the clock. You run the ball. You run more time off the clock. Brisbane was open, Rod. Q, but, but this is the thing. You do these things, and you're so dependent on perfect execution, and you're getting pressure. It's tough. You're making it tougher on yourself than you have to. Run the clock. Make it tougher on the, the, the team that's behind. You essentially gave them their timeout back. Yes, you did. They knocked a couple seconds off the clock. The operator did not start it at the time. Opportunity for Ward giving ground, giving a lot of ground. Flag is in, and when you go laterally like that, somebody's going to block somebody in the back, and that's what happened. What a bizarre game this has turned out to be. 55 points in the first half, just 10 in this second half, which still has uh, 121 possibly wacky seconds remaining. Our officials will sort it out. And Cole McDonald will have one last chance to um, redeem. We've used that word tonight. Last year's bowl game that they lost, and he didn't play very well in that game. Tonight he has played well, but they are behind. But he'll have a shot to try to pull this out. And Ryan Meskel, their field goal kicker, season-long 50 yards, kicking into a little bit breeze in this right-to-left direction. So I'm saying, you know, 45 and in, he's got a, a shot, Jason. Yeah, Q, uh, Christmas Eve has been a long night. You tracking Santa on NORAD? <laughs> tracking my flight later tonight. Well, we're close to, we might be able to count you down to Christmas on the East Coast. In this SoFi Hawaii Bowl, as this stadium well known for tremors begins to shake. Always hard to sleep on Christmas Eve as a kid, and, and now as a parent, assembling all those toys, reading all those directions, Jason. Oh, one of Santa's helpers out there. We're here for healing, though. If you're assembling something. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, blindside block, number 22 of the receiving team. Personal foul. Targeting number 31 of the kicking team. The targeting foul is under further review. So that's Max Tooley, the redshirt freshman called for targeting. So we've got dueling personal fouls on that return, and targeting stops it with the replay booth, and we're looking for excessive contact to the head or neck area or a crown of the helmet. Yeah, there, there are two targeting rules. One is toward the defenseless player, and then the other is leading with the crown of the helmet. Against anybody, crown of the helmet. And this would be leading with the crown of the helmet as a tackle was being made by Thule, and the crown of the helmet includes the front part of the helmet. And you need a factor, such as a launch or dive and that looks like he meets the definition of the rule look like it to me too yeah now as we look at it one more time again the best ejection in this rivalry was Craig Stutzman who's the quarterbacks coach for Hawaii right now back in 2001 when he punted a ball 
as high as he possibly could after a score <laughs> and said that his only regret was that he didn't practice punting enough and he would do it better the next time he's on the Hawaii staff uh, this rivalry has had loads of fun some vitriol some frustration Craig on the sideline well he, he got a pass from his coach June Jones too I mean how many times <laughs> is your coach going to say hey uh, we get up by 35 celebrate in any way you want to take a look one more time at, at Thule. Yeah, that's textbook. Yeah, that's unnecessary. It's the kind of thing that we don't want or need, you know, in the game. A guy is on the ground. No need to lead with your head. It's not good for him. It's not good for the tackler either. It's risky. Never tackle with your head. Yeah, no matter how much you like tackling, you put yourself in worse position by doing that. That's right. Crowd is starting to jeer the review process. 2.01 to go, 34-31 BYU over Hawaii. A nine-win team, the Rainbow Warriors, going to their first ever Mountain West Conference Championship game where they lost to Boise State. Kalani Sitake with some big wins this year, including one over Tennessee. After reviewing the play, the ruling of targeting on BYU's number 31 is confirmed. Both fouls will be enforced. They net to zero. Cancel, first down, Hawaii. So Tooley's going to leave. He'll get a big hug first. And he sails off with Keenan Peely's embrace. This is the part of the rule that I think we do need to change, though. There is no reason to force the guy to make a perp walk to the uh, locker yeah. room you once know you kick him out of the game. Take the helmet away. Take the pads off. He should be able to stay on the sideline and watch the game with his teammates, but not participate anymore. Yeah, there's no reason for quarantine. Right. Uh, let him learn yeah. if we believe in learning the game. Sure. I agree with that. So 201 and the net is zero. So with the targeting penalty, it's not offsetting penalties as administered by Tim O'Day and his crew. No timeouts for Hawaii. So Cole McDonald etch his name into Aloha Stadium. Correction. The blind side block will be marked off half the distance to the goal. The dead ball personal foul targeting is 15 yards. First down Hawaii. So because of the location of the block, it was inside the range of half the distance. They'll mark that off, then they'll mark the targeting off, and the punt still stands. Got to work the outside now, Rod, with no timeouts, correct? Yeah, as we take a look at the blindside block on replay, we're looking at first down and a long way to go for Hawaii. And you're right, Q. Outside is where they're going to have to work. Not much inside unless Bird is able to work some magic. Long ball. Down the edge. Incomplete. A little too much air under it. He was looking for JoJo Ward against Kowalaku, second down. Yeah, and, and that's the, the thing we were talking about, Q. When they're bunching up things inside, they're giving you press coverage on the outside. Ward is their best deep threat on the outside. And so... Ward Donald created separation, Rod. He was by him there for a moment. That ball seemed to hang. It did. JoJo Ward, 1,000-yard receiver, all Mountain West second team. There's some talent on the outsides for Hawaii. McDonald again scanning. Now he runs straight up the gut, and McDonald dives. He's short by a yard, so the clock will move on a third down and one coming up. A little sense of urgency for Hawaii. They've got time. They need to pick up this first down. Empty formation. They can pick this up easily. Light box again. Three on the line. McDonald heaves it deep. Sideline. He's got the freshman Martiner. Nick Martiner to the 25-yard line. He was the only one in the zip code. It's a gain of 37. And BYU simply forgot about it. Little used. Martiner, 84, six foot five, playing on the left outside, was ignored by BYU. They had number 11, Heron, roll up short. As you see, he's short, and nobody is behind him to protect the deep throw. Hawaii in striking distance. McDonald. 
Are you kidding me? Nick Martin or Knight at Aloha Stadium. Soak it in, Cole McDonald. Well, Quint, we talked about the approach for Mc McDonald had to be to the outside because BYU was packing everything into the middle to take away the seam route inside, to take away the post route inside, and the guys on the outside had to win. They just did. They beat the man coverage. Nick Mardner. Three receptions on the season prior to that drive. The lanky freshman. It's quite the connecting flight from Honolulu to Mississauga, Ontario. You see McDonald quickly looking out to his left, recognizing the single coverage and the slant route by Mardner. Now, most of the time, BYU had been playing press coverage on the outside receiver. Karen played off that time, which gave Mardner an inside route, and he took full advantage of that on the slam. They scored too fast, Jason? They might have. By the way, the clock strikes Christmas on the East Coast, and any Hawaii fans near the Atlantic are thrilled right now. Did they score too fast, though? Did they? How about, how about Cole McDonald redeeming himself from last year's bowl game in which he threw for 85 yards? In such an uneven season, it's not only that redemption, which certainly exists in his heart, but it's the who knows when the plug's going to get pulled on my ability to start for this team. Drive to drive some days. He's looking over his shoulder. Well, he plans to be back next year with one more year of eligibility, although he is eligible to come out for the draft. Big hit, ball loose. OKK oh, knocked it free, and they unpile, and BYU will have an opportunity. High moms all around on the Hawaii sideline. BYU with a buck 12. This was a rocking hit on Gowalaku. That ball not completely out, but recovered. Wilson have any magic? Let's see. Zach Wilson with a bullet. Simon the grab just short of the 40 yard line two timeouts for BYU more than a minute to go two timeouts It'll take a touchdown Plenty of time There is stirring confidence in the heart of that 20 year old Zach Wilson Throw again for Simon who crumples down at midfield still two timeouts remaining 55 seconds to go BYU against their rival from here in Honolulu. Wilson looks very confident. He's obviously run the two-minute drill a lot in practice, but this isn't practice. Wilson tucks it. Wilson looking for the sideline. He hurdles to the sideline, and he's gotten a lot of air so far tonight, whether his coaches want it or not. 38 seconds. Three plays. He's made three quick decisions, two throws and one run. They have a couple timeouts. As long as he's making quick decisions, they should be okay. Now the question becomes, what happens when Hawaii brings a little bit more pressure? Will they hear? Thunderous roar. <laughs> Wilson diverts and he throws to the sideline. Once again, Micah Simon at the 40. That's a first down BYU. Hawaii only bringing four and trying to play zone coverage behind it. They haven't felt the need to go to man coverage or bring a fifth rusher yet. What do you think of that choice? I think they need a spy who is athletic enough to keep an eye on Wilson. 
Bushman working out of the slot, the dangerous tight end. Intercepted! Bushman was the target. Corey Bentley ripped it off, and the Rainbow Warriors are dancing. Island Livens real good for Corey Bentley, who's got his second pick of the night. Watch Wilson's eyes. They never change. They lock completely on to Bushman, and Bentley read them the entire way and jumped in front of Bushman. He's playing zone. He's looking him up. He sees him, and he runs the route for him. That is a tremendous defensive play. In zone coverage, you keep your eyes on the quarterback. He felt for the threat around him, knew it was 89 Bushman. That's a defensive play of the game. BYU had won 11 of the last 12 against their rival, but Nick Rolovich and this intriguing, burgeoning Hawaii program <laughs> takes care of BYU and wins. The SoFi Hawaii Bowl. What a season for this team. Wow, what a game. What a Christmas Eve game. Merry Christmas to those celebrating. A wild finish for Quentin Rodden, our entire crew. I'm Jason. Stay tuned for the ESPN app and the post-game trophy ceremony. For now, Bucci and Zoom in Sports Center.